And we are live. All right, it's just me. Sorry. No Mets tonight. Uh, Mets is at work. We're supposed to start filming again on Monday. Um, so if anybody pops in here, we'll uh, see what's up. It's kind of an impromptu stream tonight. Um, I had plans last night that got canceled at the very last minute. Um, and then today I had no plans. I kept reaching out to people, but nobody wanted to hang out. So here I am. Uh, went and got a ton of stuff done today, though. So I, I feel pretty, pretty good about the amount of shit that I got done today. Um, and, uh, yeah, I got some, some people pop in. We'll, uh, we'll see what's what. I did put it in the Discord to let people know that we were streaming. Here we go. We got some people. What's going on? How you doing? Impromptu stream tonight. Um, there was nothing else going on, so I figured I'd pop in here and say hello to you people. How is everybody tonight? Good evening indeed. It's uh, raining like a bastard here. Wes, how you doing? Um, yeah, just me tonight, no Mets. Uh, enjoying the weekend. Well, that's good. Not bad. How you feeling? Well, I got some, uh, some, uh, you know word on what's wrong and what's not wrong. Alright, cool. Um, first things first, it's not cancer. So that's, uh, that's a good thing. Um, the, uh, I do have damage to my, my liver, my kidneys, and my bladder uh, that comes from the surgery that I had about the urethra years ago. Apparently, I just did all kinds of extra damage. And then stress and all that kind of stuff. Um, I put a, you know, my prostate's in bad shape. So there's going to be some treatments that are going to come up. Um, but as of right now, it is not cancer. So that is a, that is a good thing. But it's still going to be painful and shitty. So I'm, uh, I'm getting ready for that. Um, and then I, I took on a, a, a part-time job, which I start on Tuesday. Finally able to turn my computer on. Oh, wow. Well, I'm sorry your computer is in as bad a shape as I am. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I got those results yesterday uh, and um, while at work. So that was fun. And, um, yeah, I, uh, I, I was supposed to go hang out with some people last night, and, uh, what's the new job? Uh, it's gonna be, um, it's retail management. Um, a dude who knows me, uh, basically needs a babysitter for a location that he has, um, physical media stuff, uh, but I told him I can do, like, two or three days a week, uh, while I'm, you know, working my way out of the theater, and, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens and take on more days if I have to, but still in the process of, um, interviewing for, for new jobs and stuff. Hope you feel well soon. Me too, man. Me too. The, uh, the medication they gave me tastes terrible. Uh, it makes my pee smell like burning blacktop. Um, yeah, I'm glad it's not cancer too, man. I wasn't ready to go down that road again. Uh... But, you know, we are, we're here now. It's what we're doing. The streaming was laughing at the... Oh, yeah, the, the Patrick thing. So I've got um, Monday, Mets is coming up to meet me. It's not cancer, exactly. Uh, Mets is coming up Monday to shoot a couple shorts with me. So um, I wrote a, a bunch of short stuff this week. And uh, the one I want to do is me at the concession stand... And, um, you know, I'm like, you know, it'll be Mets behind the counter with the camera. And I'll be like, oh, yeah, I got the, I want to get one of those fun popcorn buckets. You know, you got Godzilla, you got Ghostbusters, you got Dune. 
I don't know, which one do you think is the most fuckable, you know? Uh, hey, Newt, just tuning in. Oh, fuck, didn't know you had another cancer scare. Yeah, um, I, uh, for the last, man, I don't know, it's been at least over a month now. Um, uh, I, guess I can go back into it for anybody who's joining. Um, I, I thought I had a hernia. I, uh, I, was, uh, I was being intimate with a female friend of mine. And, uh, I, I felt like I pulled something, um, obviously I didn't say anything, cause, you know, I'm a trooper, and, uh, but I let it kind of go and go and go, um, until it got so painful that I had to take myself to, uh, the ER in the middle of the night here, and, um, so they, they checked me all out and stuff like that, and they, they said, like, you're, you know, you gotta get tested for prostate cancer and all that kind of stuff, and the first time I, the first test I got, the PSA level was like super high. So they said, you know, you're welcome to get other options, but this might be what you're facing. So I went and got a second option, um, a second opinion, and they told me, well, your prostate is enlarged, your urethra is twisted, um, and you're having issues with your kidneys and stuff like that. So I had a third opinion, and the third opinion is what I finally got the results for. Where they were like, yeah, you had a, you had an, I have an intestinal blockage, uh, I have an enlarged prostate, my urethra is twisted, um, and it's fucked up my kidneys and stuff like that. So I gotta, I gotta, I don't need dialysis. That was one of the big things, um, but uh, yeah. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be a painful, painful uh, thing. But they, they gave me these meds that taste terrible. Twisted urethra sounds like a uniquely new problem. Very much so. And it all came from, you know, the surgery that I had to have way back in uh, 2009, the famous urethra uh, story. And then in 2013, uh, they, they cut out a piece of my prostate because they thought that it was cancerous. Um, and, uh, yeah, but it turns out that they just kind of did a little bit more damage that was already damaged. So, um, yeah, so they gave me meds for now. They did, like, this, uh, like, ultrasoundy kind of thing. And, um, so now took on this other part-time job while still running the theater a couple days a week. And, uh, I just got to work out a, um, a plan on a schedule for, for getting all this stuff resolved and then paying for it and all that shit. So, you know, it's, it's, not, nothing's ever easy. What's up? My job is going great. That's awesome, man. I'm glad that your first uh, your first check is coming in. That's good. You know, it's good that you're finally stable somewhere, too, because there's months of interviewing and all that kind of stuff. I've, I've been on a couple interviews. Uh, I also skipped a couple interviews. Um, and then, uh, what's going on, man? You should be watching Clue right now. You shouldn't be watching the stream. You should be watching Clue. I can't believe you've never seen Clue. Uh, that would be... <laughs> Twisted Urethra does sound like it could be a corn song. And when they start in the thing, I'm going to go... Hmm, I'm going to freak on a leash. Um, yeah, so no, it's been a, it's been a weird uh, couple weeks. But, um, you know, and, and, and people suck. Still dealing with the nonsense from the dude who bailed on us with the production budget and people who uh, we had, I had put to work on stuff, you know, have not been very kind. I, I wish that they would understand the situation, but they don't. So, uh, <laughs> I got a clue right over here. Um, so those guys have been dealing with that. And then uh, people I was working with on the comic got pissed off that I put up the Florida man logo as a t-shirt and they said that I did that as a fuck you to them because they wanted uh, a well thought out plan for marketing but I was like dude it's been almost three years and I understand it takes a lot of time to make a comic but I want people to know that it's still coming so I, I've just been I've been getting hit from every angle uh, these last few weeks so I'm just trying to kind of figure out a, a way to do something creative um, and uh, you know hopefully starting a new gig a couple days a week will be a nice little reprieve. And um, like I said, Mets is going to come up. We're going to shoot like a porn star. I wish I could do porn. It would be so much easier. I don't know. Porn stars of late are having like a rough time, man. Um, 
slide in here. Uh, it's raining like crazy outside, so you'll probably be able to hear that. Um, I had to park like a million miles away from my apartment, too. Uh, I wanted a, a shamrock shake earlier because I haven't had one yet this year. And uh, <laughs> it wasn't worth it because as I'm walking, it's just I'm getting torrential downpour on. So I was just like, fuck this, man. Do a remake of a remake of a remake. They do that all the time. It's called Hollywood. But yeah, I'm doing the popcorn bucket skit. I'm doing a um, move to Australia. There you go. Sometimes I think about it, man. Sometimes I, I, I put off taking certain jobs and moving because I thought certain things were going to be happening around here. And the more and more I look at it, the more I realize that they're not going to be happening. Um, and I feel like I've wasted a lot of time. Uh, Seems like OnlyFans helped a lot. Yeah, that kind of sucks. We were talk uh, Melissa and I were talking about that on the one video. Um... But yeah, I don't know. I've just I've just been very dejected lately when it comes to creative shit. And it's like, why am I wasting my time on stuff that's just not going anywhere, doing anything? Um, but I'm gonna shoot a couple things coming on Monday. I'm gonna shoot a parody video of the Nicole Kidman uh, AMC intro that hopefully will get a little bit of attention. Um, and then I got a fun Ghostbusters thing for Mets to shoot. So. I love the look of the Slimer bucket. It isn't here in the UK. The indie film scene in Melbourne is amazing. Yeah, I don't know. Here it's just like... I don't know. A dude yesterday, though, wanted to talk about doing a Jersey Devil movie. And I do have a script that I wrote uh, that was going to be... It was, it was an anthology that was going to be for Cinemassacre... Um, because he wanted originally to turn the, the Mimmel the Elf thing that he did into an anthology about cryptids, so I wrote a whole book, I wrote the entire thing, uh, for him, and I did a Jersey Devil one, and I was like, well, these are mine, and I, I made a post the other day on Facebook about the new Jersey Devil, and, uh, a dude reached out to me, he's like, oh, I'd love to do a Jersey Devil one, so I gotta find that script now and send it to him and see if it's something he might be interested in, in doing, but I'm just kinda, I'm tired of writing. I don't really feel like it anymore. I'm just tired of putting energy into things that are just going to sit and, and, you know, I don't have the, the time or the money right now to, to make movies by myself. Uh, it's not like it used to be, and then I don't have the people in my corner anymore like I used to. So I'm just kind of getting, like, more and more... I just don't care right now, you know? Um, and it was the same thing. I, I, I sat down yesterday, uh, and I was going to shoot something for Ghostbusters, and I was like, fuck, I don't like doing this by myself. Like, it's no, it's not fun anymore. And it's like, if you don't have a personality and you're just going to talk about the movie, what's the point? You know, I, I want to bring something to it, but I feel like I've told all those stories already. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm in this weird middle area right now where I don't quite know what I feel like doing or, or you know, anything like that. Uh, I'm cooler than the other side of the pillow. Well, right now, all my pillowcases are in the dryer, so they're all going to come out pretty warm, so there will be no cool side just yet. Right, Elvira? She doesn't care. Uh, sorry. Thank you. Yeah, uh, not having cancer is, is big. <laughs> I hope so. You know, it just, um, any movies, uh, trying to... Uh, any recommendations for six? I mean, the '60s, '70s, and '80s were the wild west when it comes to film. I feel like that's some of the best stuff because there wasn't the the rules that there are now. There wasn't the social uh, constructs that there are now. So I feel like you get away with a lot more stuff. I, you know, I. It, whenever people ask for recommendations, I'm always like, "What are you into? Like, what do you what are you in the mood for? You can't just like." pick something out of the air and be like, here you go, here's, you know, here's straw dogs. Uh, when you're like, oh, fuck, I wanted, I wanted, uh, you know, Pete's Dragon. Original Dawn of the Dead. Original Dawn of the Dead is getting another theatrical release. Yeah, I, I, I I've, sh I've started shooting 
15, 20 reviews that I just stop in the middle of and just delete because I'm like, it's do it doesn't feel right. Like, it just feels like I'm just talking just to talk. And I don't want to just have a video just to have a video. I want I want to be saying something, you know, or or, uh, or to just dump stuff on Patreon. Like, I want to put up things that I actually give a shit about. But um, I don't know. If it's just me by myself anymore, I just I don't care. That'd be cool, yeah, because I read that book. And um, the, the version of the movie they did, it was just like in name only, you know? And then at one point, wasn't David Fincher supposed to direct the sequel? Yeah, I, I mean, I get it. I just, I don't, I don't like, I, I don't feel comfortable with putting something out and, and asking people for their time if it's just regurgitating the movie, you know? And when it comes to Ghostbusters, I was going to do Ghostbusters 2, but I was like, fuck, I've already kind of done it. Um, I, uh, I, you know, I, as much as I, I don't look back fondly on my time on that other show, I do feel our Ghostbusters review is probably the best one that I've ever did over there. And I also think that it might be the best, uh, Ghostbusters 2 review on YouTube. Did you ever check out the Duplass Brothers films? Is that, um, Creep? I saw Creep 1 and 2. Matt showed me those. Go back and see what I missed here. Video of my poster collection. I'll do that eventually. Um, I, I, there's, I still need to get a couple more frames. Uh, make Grease Lightning the movie. Um, I, I still gotta get a couple frames because there's a couple dead spots and if I'm gonna show off the poster collection I wanna have the cool stuff. Yeah, I don't, Roberto, I don't like, I don't like, I don't like summarizing things either. Like, I like to tell a story that's connected to the thing, but I think I got, um, I think I got kind of spoiled having people to bounce off for a while that when I do go back, uh, what are some dream posters you don't have? Ooh. Hmm. It's a good question. There's a couple that I've been searching for, but... Let's see. What interests you to do? What would interest you to do a video about? I don't know. I... I I'll get on things where I'm like really into it. Like the other night I watched um, Wild Things, the 1998 uh, movie um, with the threesome scene. And I was like, you know what? This might be more fun to do with a co-host. So I deleted the video that I made. Um, check out early. Okay. I'll check it out. Um, I don't know. Of late, it's just like... I, I don't know, I'm not I'm not finding anything that's like really speaking to me and I wanna get back to showing people movies and sitting down and talking to them about it. But it's harder when everyone's schedules are the way they are, you know. You, we used to do a weekly stream, but Mets is very busy with work and with um and with wrestling and I barely have any time. Uh people Oh, well, I'm glad that people like the Florida Man tea, man. Uh, I got in a little bit of trouble over it. <laughs> uh, I am going to do Fan of the Paradise eventually. That's going to be, that's got to be a, um, like a milestone episode. Like that and Ed Wood should be, like, um, reaching some kind of goal episodes. Um, you know, because they're two of my favorites and they're ones I could talk at great length about. Um, and then it's an idea, are you going to, um, what about Wild Thing, that urban Tarzan movie? No, Wild Thing, the, the Denise Richards and, um, uh, uh, Sydney from Scream movie. What's her name? <laughs> Kevin Bacon shows his dick in it. Uh, but I for, uh, Bill Murray's in it. I forgot what a fun, sleazy movie that it was and how you really can't make that kind of movie anymore. Um, it was sort of the last, uh, Nev Campbell, that's it. 
um, kind of the last grasp of the uh, the sexploitation movie, you know? I did on the walk up here. I, I danced naked in the rain. Oh, you picked up the Angora box set from Rhino? Nev Campbell. Yeah, I used to have the uh, the uh, the Angora box set. Where could I get the t-shirt? Go to, we have a T uh, T Fury. Um, I put a couple designs up there, but you could get like mugs and stickers and magnets and shit like that too. And it all goes towards my uh, my not cancer now um, doctor's bills. <laughs> uh, but that's all right, you know. But no, I want to I want to get back to having people to. Um, have I seen Wild Thing? No, I haven't. Other than. Uh, Ricky Vaughn, the uh, the pitcher for the Cleveland Indians in Major League. So I had the blood work go. Blood work went well. I didn't. I do not have cancer. I have an intestinal blockage. I have a. Uh, I have a uh, over swollen prostate. Uh, it's caused kidney and uh, bladder issues, and I have a twisted urethra again. So that's going to be a thing. So that I have to. Um, you know, that I got to deal with. Just dip those pills in chocolate. I was thinking about that earlier. I was like, say you don't have a silver bullet, but you want to kill a wolf man. Could you just feed him chocolate and he would die because he's a dog? Oh, I have another joke. What's the difference between three cocks and a joke? I can't take a joke. I can take a Twizzler. <laughs> right, Elvira? She doesn't care. Right? That is talent. <laughs> Airtight. Um, yeah, they gave me... This terrible saw pimento ship that I'm supposed to take, and um, it sort of t it sort of tastes like what woodshop class smells like, uh, and it makes your piss kind of smell like like if someone is like retarring a roof. Um, happy Saturday, how you doing? So they gave me meds. Uh, they did like an ultrasound thing, and, um, it's a, uh, it's a process now. Oh, true. So many ways to kill a wolf man. Car crash. You made birdhouses, like Jesse, on, uh... Breaking Bad, he sold his birdhouse for drugs. Yes, that's what people say to me about the, uh, the, um, the urethra thing. Elvira's in love with a Russian ghost. Oh. <laughs> and the pizza guy who's always looking for Mets. Uh, wasn't bad. Had a student... Watch it. Okay. I never had uh, accident with power tools. Old age. Um, I think it's a little bit of everything. Um, obviously, I had damage to my urethra from the jaw surgery I had. I had damage to my entire. Oh, how you doing? Uh, grave reviews. How you doing? Is in here. If you guys have not subscribed yet, you totally should. Uh, I had um, damage to my body from uh, cancer treatments before, um, and then I guess just over the last few years of, uh, uh, have you smashed a lot of strange? You have no fucking clue the sheer amount of strange that I have smashed. They're all strange, and I've smashed every one of them. <laughs> That's how I found out that I, that I wasn't doing well again, was from smashing recently. Well, not recently, but about a month ago, and then going like, I think I pulled something. Let's talk about it. I think I've told a lot of, uh, you know, where's sexy Melissa? 
Uh, Melissa's at work. Um, or at, uh, she's in the Poconos. Elvira and the Crypt Keeper. That'd be kind of cool. Just remember doing it uh, on the 21st. Okay, send it to me. I will definitely share that all over the place. Um, I can't wait to see what you guys think of it. I'm totally not fuckable at all. Uh, sexy wrestling, all the sexy time. Uh, no, I, I... They damaged favorite trauma film. Um... I think first Toxic Avenger, but I would probably say Cannibal the Musical would be probably up there as well. Uh, did you like the video yesterday I sent you? I thought it was... Oh, yeah, yep. You're stuck at work? Yeah. Um, no, I, I've, I've had so many maladies and, and, and injuries and, and sicknesses and stuff like that that I'm surprised that I'm still alive half the time. But, you know, I, I used to get laid a lot. I used to, uh, you know, score way above my, my pay grade. Um, 12K wasn't an accident. That's true. But I'm just saying. You see the new Toxic Avenger. No, and I don't have no fucking clue when that's even going to come out. Um, it screened at a festival, and then it just... Homer said hello. Well, tell Homer that Elvira says, go fuck yourself, because she's ignoring me. Illness from smashing. It's very good. No, it's not from that at all. It's I, I just I realized I was injured from it. You know, even more so for the girl. Well, that's possible too. Um, I've injured a couple women in se during sex. You know, not on purpose or anything like that. It just happens. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Um. He's just staring at me. Elvira's staring against uh, at the wall because I'm not paying attention to her. Um, but no, Melissa is uh, up at her family's house in the Poconos, um, mm -hmm. and it was raining too hard for. Uh, do you see the kitty? There? Um, it was raining too hard for her to uh, be able to come down and uh, shoot with us today. So. New Toxic Avenger sounds lame. Yeah, from what I saw... Ah! My laundry's done. Uh, from what I was told um, when we were having those meetings with uh, with Lloyd Kaufman and Michael Herz, um, I don't know. I don't know how people are going to like this one, but whatever. I, I have the original one. Jack Ram is always what I said. There you go. I do like that Toxie is um, uh, Peter Dinklage, though. <laughs> million Dollar Newt? No, because then I'll be like Million Dollar Baby. I'll fucking break my neck. And it's weird if it's like Peter Dinklage, if they're going to like grow him up, because then is that offensive to little people? So I'm five foot five, and I don't know. Oh, right. The dude in that movie. Uh, he was not happy about me doing laundry during a stream. Um, has a great writer. Yeah, yeah. And director, too. I think there was a sequel to Forbidden Zone. Hey, Newt, what's your first... was your first poster? Uh, what was the first poster I got? No, you know what? Because when I was a kid, uh, the projectionist at the theater we went to gave me a great mouse detective poster, and I had it for a super long time. The first poster I got when I was working at the theater was hmm, 99 or 2000, so it was like, maybe it was like Sphere or Red Planet or one of those type of movies. Um, I know, I, I know, Bla I got a Blair Witch 2 one early on. First one that I bought myself, like, on eBay was Creepshow, which I, which is right over there. Um, and then from there I've just been collecting, so. 
Yeah, I think uh, I like uh, a lot. The look of Elijah Wood is ridiculous because he just looks like Gollum. Um, let's see, another great mouse detective. Uh, Radigan is the best. Yeah, that was a, I. It's one of the very first movies I remember, like, seeing in the theater and like retaining. You had a bunch of the blacklight weed posters in the nineties. I'm excited the new John Waters play. Yeah, if it happens, uh, do you have a crush on Melissa? Melissa and I were uh, were were tight for a while there. You know, um, she's amazing. You know, Melissa and Metz are two of the people who were there during like when things were really bad. Uh, so I I owe them a lot. And um, no, Melissa's Melissa's pretty great, and uh, we quite enjoyed each other's time for a while there, a couple times at the Screenwave office, you know. Off work, sadly, no work today. No, I, I was, I'm off today. Have you ever seen the Warren Oates movies? Of course. All those, uh, those kind of movies that came out in the wake of, you know, Stroke Race and, and um, you know, uh, all those, like, uh, you know, Burt Reynolds-style movies. He was kind of in that whole thing. We need a six-foot poster of Newt. Do one of me, but it's like the Frazetta uh, Vampirella one, like the door poster. Um, yeah, no, no work today. Uh, I was trying to get people to hang out, but nobody wanted to. Go <laughs> fuck. Uh, let's see. Any more doctors? Don't mean to pry too much. Yes, I do. I have a. I have an appointment on Thursday. Um, first poster I ever got was Jade with David Caruso. Awesome. She's going to. She enjoyed it. Um, Melissa really liked, uh, coming out to film with us, too, so. Do you have a VHS collection? Not anymore. Um, you need the Burt Reynolds poster. I should just remake the Burt Reynolds poster. And it's just me. On a rug, naked. Um, we could be Eskimo Brothers. I'll, I'll ask, I'll ask Melissa if they're interested, you know, or if she's interested. Hey, what's going on, man? How you doing? Spaghetti for dinner. I love me some spaghetti. Um, yeah, we used to have the Burt Reynolds poster. Uh, didn't Stan Lee do that? Yes, he did. We used to have the Burt Reynolds poster at the video store. Can you remake that poster and sign me one? Sure. I think that'll go well. Um... No, I was trying to go out tonight and do something, but everybody was busy, and there's a bunch of uh, there's a bunch of um, cons in the area this weekend, so nobody's around. Uh, did you watch Boy Meets World or The Wonder Years? I watched The Wonder Years. I saw some of Boy Meets World, but not a ton of it. Um, I kind of lost interest once they got to like high school and stuff. I'm up to 1995 in my memoirs. Good year. You should trade video store war stories. Yeah, I, I worked at uh, Blockbuster Video for a while um, as a regular employee and then came back years later when I needed a job uh, because I was trying to teach the theater a lesson. Uh, let's see. My girlfriend asked why I have that. Oh, okay. It's not having inspiration. You just have one, but it's like one of those cats. It's like, you know, hang in there, baby. Mondo Madness and Face of Death. If you found a bunch of VHS tapes, what do you know? Hold on. What do you know about Mondo Madness? Uh, is it like Face of Death? Mondo, well, it depends. There's a couple different versions of... R.I.P. Rita Peter Dinklage? No. Uh, Green Acres or Beverly Hillbillies? I watched more Beverly Hillbillies. The Mondo films, there was a lot of different versions of them. I originally like, you know, you have Mondo Kane, um, and then you go into things like, you know, uh, you know, Mondo Topless, uh, Africa Blood and Guts, uh, all that kind of stuff. So, um, when it, I don't know if Mondo Madness was one of those VHS coll collaboration ones, because I don't remember that being one of the titles of the original series of travelogue style Mondo movies. Um, Mondo Topless was Russ Meyer's movie, and I based my was originally called Only Fangs script on it until somebody else made Only Fangs, so I had to change mine to Ghouls, 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 where it basically was a loose narrative 
wrapped around like almost a uh, like sexy girls posing, but a minor monsters kind of thing. Does he? One of them does a podcast. Um, there's a there's a Pod Meets World podcast because they threw out the first pitch at the Phillies game last year, and it was like Topanga, and then some of the other people. Mondo Kane is a great movie in the background of party. Background party movie. Um, hmm. You know what? One of my favorites, like if you do like a Halloween party and stuff like that, is all the special features on um, the uh, Monsters Cra Crash Pajama Party DVD that something weird did. It's got like all this fun shit on these trailers and stuff. But I just have tons of trailer compilations too, so it's rare that I have people over. But whatever I do, and we're all doing stuff. I'll put on um, I'll put on a uh, a trailer compilation. Uh, what's the last thing you bought at Crazy Eddie's? Huh. I definitely got my um, I definitely got my plate my uh, Sega Genesis at Crazy Eddie's. I remember that because I got it before Sonic came out, so it came with um, uh, was it? Golden Axe or Altered Beast? I don't remember. Has anyone found... Oh, I didn't ask if anybody's found um, Melissa yet on PlayStation. She really wanted to... She really wants to stream video games with you guys. So I was like, let's do it. But she couldn't make it down this time. Oh, it was Altered Beast? Okay. Rise from your grave. There's a rewatch podcast with all three kids. Okay. Panga needs to start an OnlyFans. Are you into boutique, boutique DVDs uh, or Blu-rays? Um, yeah, when uh, stuff that, that like MVD does or um, or uh, you know stuff I worked on with like Culture Shock and and stuff like that. But I don't really collect stuff anymore. I left so much shit behind. Um, well, left behind because I wasn't allowed to go get it at uh, at the old studio that I just kind of stopped collecting stuff and you know. So they used to have a lot of VHS tapes. Spent the I liked Golden Axel. I liked Altered Beast a lot too. Okay. I mean, she still looks good. I saw the uh, I saw the thing that the Phillies put out. Um, with them throwing out the pitch, and I was like, good for her, man. She still looks good. Same thing with um, Winnie Cooper from The Wonder Years. Like, she's a mathematician now, but she did a movie called Mancation that I worked on years ago. I never met her or anything like that. I, I did meet Joey Fatone worked on that movie. Um, but, yeah, she worked on that one, and, and she looked really good still. It's like uh, the one girl from Full House, uh, Jody Sweden apparently got like big fake breast implants and used to be like addicted to heroin. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah, Melissa was uh, was an exotic dancer and, and a wrestler and, and uh, she's very demanding in many ways, but she's super cool and laid back. Say it every stream. Read the full comment out loud. I know. I I I'm going through and trying to have the whole conversation in my head, and and I'm trying to keep my uh, trigger what I'm gonna say, and and I'm bad at this. I let I like when other people read it, and then I can respond to it. But it's just me by myself. Damn it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um. No, it's cool. I used to. I miss having stacks of DVDs and shit like that, and VHS tapes and all. Um, now things are just kind of like stacked up over here and I just have two stacks of things. Um, most of them are stuff that like I worked on at this point. Um, let's see. Artos hair is how beautiful is that man's hair? It's too beautiful. It's not fair. Teach Elvira to speak and read. Elvira. Can we get you a Rosetta Stone? Guess not. Best film I've watched recently. Um, I don't know. 
I don't really, I haven't really watched anything in a while. Um, let's see. Streaming services do I use? Uh, Amazon Prime. Watch Shutter occasionally. I like Screambox. I watch YouTube a lot, and um, and Mets is Netflix. Mets is usually directing traffic on the live streams, and it works better that way. Brain needs a moment to process. Can no, very true. Uh, it's very hard to um, to you know to not to figure out where I want to go with it, and then not get distracted by the next thing. Uh, I have a copy of Twixt for you. Is it any good? Because I have still not seen it yet. Last time I saw you went later. Let's see. Uh, you watch Robert Altman's Nashville. Good movie. Very good movie. Yeah, everybody's all mad at Tubi now, and they're like, oh, they're cutting, uh, they're cutting movies. Um... And uh, they're not. There's a couple, but it's mostly distributors are sending cut versions. Uh, news in the job hunt. Uh, I took on a, a part-time thing that starts this week. And um, we'll see what happens with that. Just to kind of babysit for a little bit to help out a friend who uh, has physical media. I, I don't know anything about Fallout. I've never played the games. But that sh the trailer for the show looks pretty fucking awesome. So I'm pretty excited about that one. Um... It's it's got a cool vibe to it. Uh, Altman or Cassavetes? I don't know. Cassavetes doesn't really work for me. In a lot of times, um, he's far too pretentious and far too trying to be trying to like throw off the audience. And I understand that. You know, uh, is your boss still giving you crap? No, he's just not talking to me. So. At all. <laughs> Imagine a porn star named Walter Gaggins. I like that. I like that a lot, actually. Um, Walter Goggins is great. He's just been one. Of, he's just become one of those actors, uh, especially on the the Righteous Gemstones. You're like, I, this dude's fucking incredible. Uh, has your job hours been cut or just the job scope? Both, actually. Now, this week, uh, I, I put in more hours simply because there was a lot of extra crap to be done. But in a lot of ways, it's just, um, you know, it, it's it's just a matter of trying to minimize things. So, uh, how about you do some Jane Mansfield films? Not a bad idea. I saw that, I actually, not too long ago, I just watched the documentary um, uh, about her and Anton LaVey. Love Walter Goggins and the Hateful Eight. Yeah, he's great in that one. Tarantino knows how to... I mean, no, I mean, most directors know how to get something out of him. I feel like he was so wasted in that Ant-Man movie, but then most people were who aren't Paul Rudd, basically. <laughs> I wasn't sure if I was going to like The Righteous Gemstones because... I'm a huge fan of um, Eastbound and Down, but it turned out to be really good. We've been going to the gym. Not this past week. Uh, hey, what's up? I, um, I just, I've been busy every day, so I haven't had a chance to do much of anything. And uh, it's actually been pretty frustrating. Favorite Canadian movies. Um, we were talking earlier in the Discord about Strange Brew. Uh, Vice Principles is really good too. Yeah, people told me about that. I heard mixed things, so I didn't know to watch it or not. Um, meatballs, Porkies, My Bloody Valentine. Oh yeah, Joe. That the studio is now blaming her and saying, "Well, it's clearly." <coughs> it's clearly her and not because we made a terrible movie and they were uh, saying that she doesn't have any star power I was like how about just take responsibility that you made a bad movie <clears throat> alright see you later Hell Knight Adam Egomaniac 
Okay. I don't know what Adam Egomaniac means. Um, yeah. But, uh, I don't know. I, I'm a, I love Canucksploitation movies. Uh, tax Shelter horror movies. Um, I don't know if it was like Joe Blow did a whole series of, of them. Green Knight was Canadian? Oh, okay. Adam Egoian is Canadian. Okay, I was like, I don't know who that is. I'm just discovering Sydney Sweeney and the Magnet. Yeah, I love that, like, big boobs are a thing again. Oh, okay. Directed Chloe. All right. David Cronenberg. Yes, Cronenberg is Canadian. Um, you know, and, and the Canadian tax laws are what gave us Shivers and Rabid and, uh, and, um, and Scanners back before he came to Hollywood. Uh, Rabbit, I especially like. You're from Canada. Very cool. I went to school in Vancouver for a little bit. Um, I, I especially like that the that Rabid is such an indictment of the Canadian healthcare system, yet they the Canadian government had to pay for it because of the tax laws. Uh, the Scosa sisters are too. Okay. Ryan Reynolds is Canadian. The kids in the hall are Canadian. Eugene Levy's Canadian. I heard the new movie Imaginary is not good. No, I was watching Brad Jones' review of it uh, last night, and he said that um, there's a really good idea in it, but it just gets bogged down in the same shitty, uh, low-budget, um, you know, Blumhouse way of doing things. Uh, did you ever hear back from that guy and why he was leading you on for a year? No, just... Uh, I've, Fucking bailed, man. Uh, he everything. So Quebec, the home of the Nordiques. Well, used to be the home of the Nordiques. Mm -hmm. Proper bacon is Canadian. Canadian bacon was that the uh, one of the last John Candy movies when he starts a fight by saying that. Uh, that that Canadian beer is bad. Aquaman's still holding on, I see. Yeah, he's up there hanging on. I can't get him to stand in the thing, so he just he just hangs. Wagons East was his last movie, I know that. Thinking, no, I think this is a dude. Um, uh, let's see, set up a backlight poster. Hey, Newt, I just set up a blacklight poster room. About to get baked and embrace it for the... That's awesome, man. Congrats. Uh, let's see. Canadian outside. So, I, I don't know if I've told this. Did I ever tell my Quebec story before? Um, when I was in school, there was a girl who was dating uh, uh, one of the few film dudes up there who I actually got along with. Um, and his girlfriend was very much, even though she wasn't, she wasn't French Canadian and she wasn't from Quebec, but she was all for fighting the good fight and wanting, uh, Quebec to secede and be its own nation. She was also the first like overtly vegan person that I ever met. And I remember we all went out to eat one night and it was, um, this is like 2001, 2002, we're going to see that the Devils, I think, um, were in the deep in the playoffs, and uh, we all went out to a bar to watch uh, the the playoff game, and um, I got wings and I ate all but one of them, and I was like, Shh, that one died for nothing, and she didn't like that at all. But uh, when she started going on and on and on about uh, Quebec seating, I was like, do you hear that? It's the rest of the world not giving a fuck. <laughs> Don't get involved. No, I, I, I've only, I, any Canadian girls that I've ever hooked up with have been from, uh, the, uh, from, like, the Toronto area. <laughs> uh, if I missed any of your questions, let me know. Try to catch up on stuff. 
Tried to secede in 95, didn't work. Okay. And then they lost their hockey team. Fuck Toronto. My mom is from Montreal. I like Montreal. Went to a lot of Montreal Expos games when I was uh, in middle school. She get a girl from she date a girl from Saskatoon. I can sing a song from uh, from uh, Slapshot. A little bit south of Saskatoon. Um, going ten hours? No, no, no. I have work early, early, early tomorrow morning because of the time change. Mm -hmm. Lost the team in the 2000s. Yeah, I I actually was a big Montreal Expos fan. I still have a Vladimir Guerrero jersey. Um, they got fucked by the league in '94. They probably were going to win the World Series, but the uh, the strike happened. And Netflix is actually doing a documentary about that. Um, that team was stacked, and now they're the Washington Nationals. But yeah, his son's with uh, with Toronto. I love the Expo. I, I had, up until recently, I think I lost it when I moved. I had an Expo's hat, um, a fitted hat, but it's I have no idea where it is. Look, if you didn't, if we didn't, they didn't want us to eat animals, they wouldn't taste so, they shouldn't taste so delicious. Uh, in 94, the UF had a baseball character was because of the... Oh, really? <laughs> See, Mets would know that would be more interested in this stuff. I, But it's funny that they had a, a baseball character. I was somewhere earlier, and uh, so these two dudes were talking about weird wrestling characters, and I was like, I was half tempted to text Mets, but I was like, no, I'm not going to be weird and eavesdrop on these fucking dudes' conversations. Um, sorry, I'm just reading up on anything that I might have missed here. Paul Newman said that it was his favorite movie to make in his whole career. I, yeah, I, they look like they were having a lot of fun. Canada is the... All right, I think we got everybody. <laughs> uh, you have a whole huge soft spot for baseball movies. Yeah, I was I was literally yesterday just talking about maybe reviewing Major League, um, but didn't come to pass. Was it the WWF <laughs> NFL Super Pro? That the guy who wrote that only did it to get free tickets. Um, I've had I had an idea for years when that Will Smith movie came out about concussions to do a uh, ESPN 30 for 30 about what happened to NFL Super Pro and now he's like Junior Seau because of like head injuries and shit like that. Mr. Baseball with uh, Frank Thomas, the Big Hurt, was in that movie. I had McDonald's earlier. I got fries and a Shamrock Shake, and I said I'm not gonna do this, but then I I did it anyway. Right, Elvira. Yeah. Oh, now you want to talk to me? Mr. 3000 with uh, Bernie Mac. It's very true, Gerald. Yeah, Bernie Mac, anyway, he played for the, the Milwaukee Brewers in that one. I remember the poster. Um, yeah, you get like Field of Dreams, Eight Men Out, uh, Major League Back to the Minors with Scott Bakula. Blue waffle? No, no, not blue waffle. We we don't need any blue waffles. Yeah, great movie. Oh, it's getting a four K release. Okay. Ah, uh, you deserve it. How was the Shamrock Shake? Just mint. Yeah, I just went with the standard one. Um, I haven't had one in years, so I was like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna get a Shamrock Shake." All right, bye. What a career Scott Bakula's had. Um. Yeah, I really I like uh, Lord of Illusion that he's in. My girlfriend loves McDonald's merchandise. Uh, back and forth help. BK has more food only because my grandpa and her son have worked there in their life. 
And we, we, I learned the other night at Trivia that uh, Burger King is actually older than McDonald's. I did not know that. Bacula wasn't necessary roughness. I remember that. Um, and he got to be a star, you know, he got to be a starship captain as well in, in Enterprise. Um, but, yeah, I ch I'm trying very hard not to eat fast food anymore. But then I wind up doing it anyway. And uh, then I hate myself afterwards. BK is older than McDonald's. Yep, I got that wrong at Trivia. Um, I Because I, I swore I saw a thing that McDonald's sued Burger King. But I guess I was wrong. As I usually am, so it's fine. Cat's just whacking me with her tail. I don't know why you're doing that. I'm trying to... Try to pay attention here. Don't forget Quantum Leap. Well, yeah, of course. And then they rebooted that, right? I saw the founder. Oddly enough, I saw the founder with Tony. Uh, way, you know, back when, uh, before I ever worked there. Um, yeah. When I lived there. Oh, the <laughs> where uh, when my parents were divorced and my dad just got Little Caesars all the time. Um, yeah, the, the, when Melissa was here the other night, or last week, um, let's see, I'm telling you, get yourself a crock pot. I know, I know, I never have anything even to get in here, so, you know. We're gonna go to King Burger. Rookie of the Year kind of sucked. Yeah, Rookie of the Year was kind of bad, um... The kid who played the Rookie of the Year uh, called me one time because he was trying to get his vampire movie screened in Philly, and somebody gave him my number, and I didn't believe it was him, and I hung up, and they're like, no, that was really him, and I was like, oh, shit. Okay, I haven't seen it, because uh, I remember the very last episode of Quantum Leap, he's in, like, a bar, and, like, the bartender is God, and he makes the choice not to go back. So that he could save Al and his, like, wife's relationship. Um, that's really all I remember about that very last episode of that show. Because I remember, like, I wasn't allowed to stay up to watch it. Because I was in, like, third grade, maybe. And I wound up uh, taping it. Let's see. Was there also in... Yes, he was in Buster Rhymes Halloween. Um... I like Daniel Stern a lot. Never had any of that. Actually, you know what? I did have some of those Swanson dinners before. Um, and like the Dinty Moore, like beef stew things. I remember getting a bunch of those. League of Their Own is great. I, I will defend that movie forever. I genuinely think that is, an, is a fantastic film and an incredible cast. The Amazon series, on the other hand is another one of those forced diversity things that I feel like, what are we trying to do here? It was Highway to Heaven with sci-fi, yes. I like the one where he, he leaps into the Down Syndrome guy's body and they just say retarded a lot and I'm just like, mm, it's a different time. We got... Uh, no, I don't know what that is. Schwanz? I was going to go and just a leader own... Even though I can't stand Rosie O'Donnell. Yeah, but like that period of time Rosie O'Donnell isn't like this period of time Rosie O'Donnell, you know? I thought, uh... I always thought Angels in the Outfield sucked. Um... I don't... I know I've seen that movie. I know that the... The... the, the uh... Is it Joseph Gordon-Levitt was the kid? And then the other little kid is like, it could happen. Moneyball sucks. Uh, Moneyball is about the Oakland A's, though, so I give it I give it a pass. Um, so I'm a big Oakland A's fan. Well, soon the Las Vegas A's. Uh, let's see. Rosie O'Donnell loves Trump. Really? I remember at one point my old friend at the old job had like five or six Rosie O'Donnell talking dolls 
uh, in his office. Oh, God. Yeah, uh, I, I, <laughs> I have a blackface story um, that involves around a project that I was working on, but I have to save that for a review that we're doing because it ties directly into that, but that this person thought that blackface would be okay. Um, oh, they, they did that in Oakland already? Yeah, I don't understand. Like, who the fuck is going to want to go to any of their games this year? Like, it doesn't make any sense to me that, it, that like, is Drive Away Dolls worth seeing? I did not see it. They, uh, I booked it at, um, do I still drive around JMU's? No, not since that one time. Um, yeah, I tried to book it at our Lancaster Theater, and then they, they took that uh, from me of not doing those anymore. Um, but, uh, no, I didn't get a chance to see it, but I wanted to. I'm not even doing the bookings over there anymore. Now I'm just like, fuck it. Who cares? He wants to let his son do it. Go right ahead. Although I had to make a rush change to the schedule, uh, for tomorrow because whoever made the schedule has my staff coming in before me and leaving before me, which is interesting because none of them have keys or drives, so. Oh, okay, that's cool. Um, yeah, I've been to, went to a playoff game uh, against Detroit in Oakland, um, like, I don't know, early 2000, mid, mid 2000s. Uh, what is this Cabrini movie about? Not sure. I keep seeing it as well because I was seeing what else was playing today. Um, and uh, I didn't really feel like going to see Kung Fu Panda 4. But I saw Cabrini on a couple screens. Um, I still really want to see Four Things. And I haven't had a chance to go check that one out yet either. So, um, but yeah, I don't know. i got to look up Cabrini. I know that uh, Brad Jones's channel did like a short review of it. So maybe I'll watch that. And uh, see if I want to check it out. And then next week is Ghostbusters. Um, so I'll do a review of that one. And then i got to figure out what the hell else to do. Because I I moved two reviews to the Patreon uh, that I shot for coming up. Um, I have two that Marotoso did. Um, so I still need... i got two spots i got to fill to, um, to, uh, uh, to do reviews of. Uh, they took away your booking, so you can't even screen movies anymore. Yeah, he doesn't want me to, um, and uh, I'm still going to, um, but because I can't go next the 21st. If I don't screen it the night before that, um, I can't watch it that Thursday because I got to go to Trenton um, to uh, to direct a scene for a, a, for an, uh, an anthology um, with the director of uh, Caddy Hack. So, um, he's building a set for me. I, I told him I wanted something very, uh, the dark backwards looking. And, um, so I, I, we're putting that together for, to shoot on the 21st. So hopefully I can do Ghostbusters the night before, because if not, it's going to make it really hard to do a review and, and get it out there. Cause there's not no time, you know, no movies. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I don't know what they're doing, and it's going to be interesting because uh, a couple staff have changed their availability. Two quit, so I don't I don't know if they're going to have anybody. So I, you know, pretty good, but it didn't click with it. What a chud! Yeah, very much so, man. Hasn't said a word to me in the last uh, the last two weeks. So yes, I do. I remember when uh, Trudeau did. Brown face. Don't know what he was thinking. Poor Things is on Hulu. And I've watched a few scenes of it on repeat. Yeah, I heard there's quite a bit of uh, naked Emma Stone in it. Um, I don't know, I've just never... I think she's attractive, but I've never seen her as, like, a sexual person. But, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I'll check it out. What? What do you want? 
Yeah. Can't you see that I'm trying to entertain people and you come up here wanting to talk? <sighs> what? Yeah. I wish Cabrini was about less filled. <laughs> if only, right? Uh, wasn't there, like, Paul Verhoeven did, like, a non-exploitation movie, uh, like, two years ago. Oh, are you very into Emma Stone? Are you an easy A? Yeah. Yeah, there was a lot of nudity from her. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I've just never, I've never been like, man, I'd really like to see what Emma Stone looks like naked, you know? But she's very attractive. Um, I liked her as uh, I, as Gwen Stacy, and I liked her in um, in Superbad and and stuff like that. So, and it looks like art house uh, Frankenhooker. So you know how could it be bad? And Ruffalo is in Philly right now filming the follow up series to uh, Mayor of Easttown because uh, friends of mine just keep taking pictures that he's just around. Philadelphia, and they're like, hey, I ran into Mark Ruffalo today, and I was like, holy shit. That's the thing. He's always angry. <clears throat> uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Uh, did you make something about nuns from hell? No, I did nunchucks. Uh, we did a 3D 1970s, well, early 1980s, 42nd Street, Nun, Kung Fu, William Lustig's Vigilante-inspired uh, trailer that we shot in Red Blue 3D. That's the one where Mets gets uh, blood sprayed all over their tits. Um, full of religious puns. I play a rapist priest in it. Part I was born to play. Um, and it was, it was a lot of fun. That was, a, that was cool. And the tagline is, uh, let she who is without sin kick the first ass. Uh, and we shot that all, like, around the, the back alleys of the theater and stuff like that while we, were, like, while we were open, too. What are the Oscar picks? I don't know. I, I'm so out of the loop as to what the fuck was nominated, and I realized just how little I saw this year. Uh, my friend Jeanette, um, if you used to be on the Patreon for the old channel... She was the male girl, um, and uh, she's also in, uh, in uh, Slaughter Beach. I didn't realize that. But um, she, uh, she was asking the same question. She's like, what are your Oscar picks? I was like, dude, I don't even know what fucking came out this year. Barbie? Is it Barbie? <laughs> Reminds me I've been meaning to watch Slaughter. Okay. I didn't see that one yet, but I read a review of it. There's so much stuff I just, like... At least give up Best Picture, Best Actor, Best Actress. Uh, yeah, I saw that the Holdover guy is getting uh, in trouble for plagiarism. You can't be an Oscar-nominated writer anymore. You can't run Harvard. I guess I'm just in good company. <laughs> I mean, if it's good enough for Harvard and Hollywood, right? They should call and apologize to me. <laughs> I made their show relevant. Um, yeah, I saw. I, I I heard that the holdover script uh, was very similar, like line for line, from one that the guy who wrote Luca had written. Um, I didn't see the holdovers. I really wanted to. Uh, there's a whole bunch of shit that I wanted to see. Western video game based. Oh, okay, that's what you're talking about. All right. I do love me a good spaghetti western. I was talking, uh, somebody, one of my, one of the employees had just saw Django for the first time. So, of course, that launched me into my whole fucking, uh, spiel about, you know, Franco Nero and, and, and the spaghetti western in general and, and all that stuff. So they were just like, I just like the Jamie Foxx movie. <laughs> yes, people have been telling me to watch Shogun. I haven't seen that one yet. Um, and yes, I like Buster Struggs a lot. 
Uh, I thought that was pretty cool. It made me want to make a Western. Let's have another Avatar 2 rant. Well, I gotta see something that's worth ranting over. Um, I mean, I kind of did for Madam Web um, and The Crow. Okay. I tell my friends, be a boomer and watch Western. I mean, I like spaghetti. What? I mean, I like... I like, like, old-fashioned westerns, too. Um, you know, so many of them were made in Tucson at old Tucson Studios, so it was cool when I lived there to get a crash course in, like, the history of, of all that stuff. Um, but, like, the spaghetti western, you know, you, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and, and all that kind of stuff is just, is just, just hits different. Will there be a New Empire rant? I, yeah, I mean, if it's bad, um... I don't know. I, 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 I'm, in, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic about it because coming off of minus one, I am up for the kind of sillier, over the topness of it all. I went to um, went to Walmart earlier today to grab stuff, and they had a whole bunch of the toys, and uh, it's just like I just love fucking King Kong with an Infinity Gauntlet. I was like, what is happening? All right, you know. Let me get a rant about all your rants. It's rantception. Okay. Are you looking for De Furiosa? Yeah, I mean, I, I like the new stuff they've shown. Um, I, I like uh, Chris Hemsworth with the fucking cape and the, the motorcycle and stuff like that. It should be interesting. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm so, like... I don't know what's coming out. I, there's like a couple things I'm looking forward to, but they just got everything's been kind of creeping up on me anymore. And I'm because there's like long periods of time where there's no movies out that are worth seeing. So when stuff's like coming out, I'm like, okay, Ghostbusters is coming out, Furious is coming out, King uh, King Kong, Godzilla is coming out. Like that's the only stuff right now that I have like on my calendar. Um, top five horror flicks of all time. My favorites would be Poltergeist, Creep Show. Hmm. I'll get back to you on that. Given my first out. I mean, because I'll I'd say I I prefer I prefer the Sentinel over the Exorcist. Evil Dead Two would probably be number three. Deep Red would probably be number five. I guess Chainsaw would be number four of all time. And then it gets nuanced after that. And every, like when it comes to like my favorite movies of anything, it's hard because it's always a sliding scale based on what my mood is. Ed Wood is obviously always my favorite number one movie of all time. Shawshank and then um, Empire Strikes Back and then um, Clockwork Orange would probably be the top tops, uh, but then everything else kind of is constantly shifting and tectonic when it comes to me, because sometimes I'll be in the mood for something, uh, and sometimes I'm not, and there's movies that I absolutely fucking love that I just don't feel like watching anymore, but I still love them, um, and there's a lot of times where I'll just put on the same garbage over and over again because it feels like comfort food to me, so I don't know, my movie tastes are weird, um, but I've seen so much stuff that it gets... Hard pre soft pretzels. Everyday soft pretzels. Wicker Man, 70s version, Taurus Trap, Chainsaw, The Witch, and Fantasy. Okay, that's a good list. That's a really good list, actually. I would say if you were going to say the chain or the uh, Wicker Man remake, I would be like... Although I do... I, <laughs> I'm fascinated by that movie. Um, because it's just like it's Nick Cage in a bear suit just fucking whopping chicks in the face it's so bizarre and then you get the weird james franco cameo at the end i'm like did they had to have known right that they were making a comedy and then later they tried to tell me why so it and go yeah no we were trying to make a comedy worse the uh chainsaw remake or the wicker man remake um definitely the wicker man remake because the chainsaw remake at least kept it in the same vein i just didn't like the execution just watched Mars Attacks again recently. It's a great movie as well. I think it was one more draft away mm -hmm. from being as good as it could have been. 
You have your arms like genie. Where's my third wishes? Motherfucker, where's my third wi three wishes? I'd like three things to go well for me, please. <laughs> if I could wiggle my nose, I would. Like, uh, like bewitched. Um, no, you know, I just gotta show off the guns, right? <laughs> Halloween is your uh, Halloween is on my top five for sure. Can't rewatch it for some reason. I love the Wicker Man seventies flick. Um, it's not even scary. It's just a sense of dread. Yeah. Well, the whole is Melissa an anime? Yes, Melissa loves anime. Um, or make pop culture jokes like Robin Williams or like Will Smith. Um, yeah. The the Wicker Man has this weird vibe to it because you. Without knowing where, if you if you've never seen it before, if you're watching it and you're watching where it's leading to, there is a sense of unease the entire time. That is, are these people fucking with him? Is it is it him? Is this real? Is it's like is the movie fucking with him? It's it's this very like weird kind of your one foot off the merry-go-round kind of sensibility to that movie. Um, and just Christopher Lee is just chewing the scenery. And, you know, the Willow song used to be my, my ringtone. Um, you know, Robin Hardy definitely made, like, the first, like, uh, it's such a punk rock, uh, you know, um, uh, elemental Wiccan horror movie in, its, in, in that sense. Um, and just the ending of them just, like, laughing and, and dancing and singing as this fucking dude burns alive while praying to his god that is, has no interest in answering his prayers is such a horrifying ending. <laughs> uh, what anime does she like? I don't know, I'll ask. Um, Mets and Melissa couldn't convert me. No, I just, I don't know. Like, uh, anime just has a lot of negative memories for me. And then there's a lot of people who just like, well, they want to be popular uh, once they kind of get a little bit of YouTube knowledge and then all of a sudden they're into anime as well and they're looking for things to watch and stuff like that and for to so then get people to, to talk to them about it and stuff like that and so people think that they're more into it. So I don't know. I just I never liked anime. I remember my dad went to see Joker and leave me. Uh, yeah, I mean, Joker wasn't for everybody. Joker was just... Last King of Comedy and Taxi Driver. And the new one just looks like uh, One for the Heart. Uh, Rosemary's Baby. I like Rosemary's Baby. Um, watch Cowboy Bebop. I've seen some of it. Your dad doesn't understand films and storytelling. Well, it's not for, it's not for everybody, you know. It's, it's, any art is so subjective, you know. It's like people hang dogs playing poker on their wall. You know, I have this bullshit hanging on my wall. It's... Could we sit and talk about Kurosawa for hours? Sure, but you know, I'd also really like to talk about Blackula. So it's all just you know, it's it's people's tastes are are what they are, and and um and I try not to ever really shame people for that, but you know, uh yeah, the creator of Dragon Ball did die. I've never seen Dragon Ball. I've seen the terrible live action movie. So when people are like, oh man, so and so died, and I was like, I have no idea who that is. But I'm sorry if you're a huge Dragon Ball fan, you know? If he wants action. Tango and Cash is great. What's up, everyone? Hey, what's going on, man? Just hanging out for a little bit here. Uh, wanted to see kind of what everybody was up to tonight. Because um, nobody wanted to hang out in real life. So, here I am. And then I got a long ass day at work tomorrow. Not the bees. <laughs> Poor Nick Cage. Poor Nick Cage, Elvira. Uh, just kicking Lily Sobieski across the room. Um, you can hear that, right? It's like a fucking tractor pull outside all the time. Um. Yeah, no, so I, I, uh, you watched one, but you were five. Yeah, I don't know, I just never, uh, I've seen, yeah, I've seen, like, Ninja Scroll, 
Um, I'll give you a Crunchyroll password. Is Crunchyroll an anime streaming site? Never heard, yeah, this neighborhood is crazy. It's not even a neighborhood. I live in a city, at, like, in a main drag, and it's just, there's always just something going on. I fell asleep, like I said, last night. I, I was done work around 8 o'clock, and um, I was supposed to hang out with a friend of mine, but she decided that she didn't want to go out anymore. Uh, so she's like, oh, I'm just going to stay in. I was like, all right, whatever. So I came home. I was asleep by, like, 9 o'clock. By midnight, my fucking outside is, like, vibrating by how loud it is, I was like, well, I, I guess I'm up now. Uh, 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 uh. What gets me most was the, oh, some dude smashing bottles, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I kind of like, um, and I'm still waiting for my landlord to come and fix my dishwasher. Uh, he said he ordered a new one like a month ago, and I still haven't gotten it. Um, so that's fun. But uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I wish I had more good news and good things to say recently. Um, oh, I'd love to see him play Egghead. Honestly, if you did like a R-rated version of the 60s Batman show with like tons of double entendres and stuff like that, I think that would be fucking amazing. Um, obviously no one will do that, but I'd love to see that. And, um, yeah, no, I just, uh, I just want to get back to filming. I'm just, I'm getting so stir crazy of not filming. That's why I just came up with a whole bunch of shit for Mets to come shoot with me on, on Monday. I watched Sonic X, if that counts. Oh my God, that'd be a great idea. Batman and Robin, but as fucking the, the nice guys, that movie was great. Did you like ScarJo in Ghost in the Shell? Yeah, but I, I didn't see the, the anime one until after it. So I understood people's negative, you know, feelings towards it. But when I saw it in the theater, I was like, oh, that's cool. You know, visually it was interesting. It had an interesting cast. I didn't know what all the negativity was about because I didn't know the source material. Um, and, you know, but then I was just like, also like, well, the ghost in her is Asian. And it's a ghost in a shell, and it just so happens the shell is a white girl, so I don't really see a huge problem with it like other people did, but, you know, I'm apparently racist, so I don't know. Alvira, are we racist? Oh. Um, yeah, and then hopefully I can get Melissa to come out and shoot some more stuff with us as well. I know Horn Dog is, is looking forward to that. Um... Uh, Melissa had a really funny idea for taking over the channel on on uh, April first, so I was like, "Yeah, if you come by and do it, we'll you know we'll do it." But people keep standing me up or bailing on me at the last minute. Have you ever tried any more interesting soda? Not recently. Um, what happened to the FMV thing? No idea. Uh, one of many projects that I just think it, it is never going to happen. Um, the dude I was working with just kind of like, he's working with all these other people now and it just seems like my stuff is just kind of not good enough anymore. So yeah, she can stand me up anytime. Um, yeah, so, uh, I don't know. I don't know if, I don't know if, uh, I don't know what, what I'm going to be doing or not doing anymore. So yeah. How's everything going? Um, it's going, you know? I don't have cancer, so I got I got those tests back. Uh, you doing okay, Nudezilla? Uh, yeah, I mean I'm I'm I I'm uh, got some medical stuff dealing with. Um, uh, what else? What else? What else? I don't know. Yeah, starting a part time job uh, on Tuesday and um, filming some on Monday for you know, and then I'm filming on the twenty first to finish a project. But right now, it's like once I finish this last Donald Farmer project, um, I don't really have anything else slated. So, so we, that's right. We could make adult films together. Uh, not of late, <laughs> Variety Bender. Um, it just seems like most shit just kind of like is just stopped. Um, after the dude bailed with the money and stuff like that, I had to kind of like undo all the stuff that we were doing. 
uh, because we were going to start working right away on finishing Midnight Show, shooting Amityville Halloween, and then jumping directly into Kung Fu Bikini uh, Shark Planet uh, because he didn't want it to be dinosaurs anymore. He wanted it to be sharks. So I rewrote it to be a shark movie. Um, and then when all that stopped, I had to go back to all the people who I uh, contracted and tell them, hey, there's no money, so we can't do this. Um, I shot a little a little role for a trauma movie that's coming up. Um, and yeah, just finish up the last Donald Farmer thing. And then and uh, this dude wants to read this Jersey Devil script I wrote, so I got to give him that. I just got to find it first because I rewrote it to, to be a to include all the people I used to work with. So I'm gonna have to rewrite it to take all those people out of it and all the references to those things out of it and, and, and hand it back in. Um, yeah, I don't know. But it's part of the business. Uh, yeah, it is. I'm, I, it, I've just, um, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like I'm stupid. Like the same shit keeps happening. Um, I remember when Fallon was in the shower completely nude and you were watching her. Yes, I was. I was filming. I had uh, one camera here and then I had the I was manning the other camera up top. Um, and sucks to suck, I, I did a complete rewrite of that. Biggest problem with that is the footage that we shot It's great. Um, and then the, uh, the, she started seeing this dude... And then that guy shot a bunch of stuff with her out in Vegas and in Colorado. And then none of that footage is usable. So there's just big fucking chunks that we can't use now. Um, so, yeah. So I had to rewrite based around what I physically had, which basically means almost an entire new fucking movie. So I wrote something that was a little bit more like a mixture of Clue and um, House on Haunted Hill uh, you know, so I don't know. We'll we'll see. What's the hardest part of making a movie? Money. Uh, when you have money, people will come out and do things. When you don't have money, it's like fucking pulling teeth. And I don't have the money to do things. Um, so projects kind of just uh, are just stopped. And it, just, it gets depressing. It gets depressing to like to just look at twenty something scripts that you've written um, on a, on your desktop and and. I have 25 completed full-length screenplays, um, two, four, six, eight, nine comic book scripts, and then two, four, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve short film scripts, all on my desktop. Um, and it's like you, you, you get excited about things. You get an idea. You get excited about it. You, you, you write the entire. You outline. You do all the research. You write it, and then nothing happens with it. And that's, that's the part that just kind of like, uh, uh, how do you stay on budget when it comes to making movies? You, you, you build a budget. You figure out beforehand. You, you, I, have a, I have a line producer, Adam Witt, uh, who I've been working with for years. I'll send him a script. He'll send me back a budget breakdown of uh, what something like this would cost. And then we remove, you know, um, what gear do we have? What loca like anything that we have that we don't have to pay for. Um, you could take those things out and then it's always about just you, I, I build budgets for the theater or I used to build budgets for the theater. Um, and it was just like staying on your days and all this kind of stuff. So that, that's, that's not hard as long as you plan everything properly. Some people are just like, Oh, I need $20,000 to make a movie. And then it's like, okay, well, what are you going to do with that $20,000? Like, how much is going to transportation? How much is going to food and drink and stuff like that, you know? I'll send, I'll send you the footage. No, I mean, that, that footage came out great, you know? And, and um, we also have a bathtub scene that we shot um, where, uh, you know, again, it's, it's just her and I in a bathroom, you know, and, and shooting it. And there's a lot of behind-the-scenes footage where I can't release where I'm like, Fallon, Move your arm. Your nipple is showing. Like I, I'm constantly trying to position the camera where you don't see things, and and um, it's harder when you have a mirrored space as well. Because I'm always trying to, uh, you know, always trying to make sure that people are covered properly. <laughs> it's it's not lost media. I have it. Selling the bathwater. 
I literally said that. Oh, what's going on, race? While we were filming that scene, I was like, "You should. We should sell your bathwater." And and yeah, when it comes to scripts, do you write um, an update as you're going along, or you write the whole thing and write? No. So the what I try to do is I, I I'll have. I usually start with a title, which is the worst thing you could do. Start with a title, general overview of what the hook is, have to know where the ending is, and then a couple beats. And then what I do is I build bridges to the beats. Um, if I know where it has to go, and I know where it has to start, and I know where the arc is, that makes your first and second draft way easier. But if you have certain scenes you need to get in there, I'll, I'll write... I'll, I'll skip ahead and I'll write those scenes and then I'll put X's in or something like that and then I'll just build the tissue to those things as I go um, when it comes to like bigger scripts. But a lot of times I'll just sit down and I go, okay, I know this has to go here and I'll just start typing and just make it up as I go. Um, there's only been like a couple scripts where I've really sat down and like outlined the entire thing. But every time I'll, I'll, I'll turn in a script and then I'll do... A couple more drafts because I'll have a better idea or I can clean up the dialogue here or something that might work a little bit better or I know oh we're not gonna have we're probably not gonna have this money so this effect will have to come out and be this or something like that so it's always like it's always changing but that's the kind of shit that bothers me though is just to keep writing and just be like well it's not going anywhere would you do a salt burn <laughs> no not really There you go. Newt's ball scum. It's like... <laughs> How to get jock itch. Um, yeah, I don't know. I... Uh, just disheartened by the entire thing. I just kind of... I, I'm losing my... Uh, my desire to, to write shit. Because it's like, why bother? You know? It's not going anywhere. It's not, you know? Uh, most of the stuff I've been doing, uh, doesn't Fallon have her own alcohol sponsor? Yes, and then Fallon also was, like, uh, featured in a bunch of, like, sex toy stuff. Like, she was, like, the girl on, like, the, the, the packaging for, like, a lube and stuff like that. Because I remember she got brought out to, like, the, uh, uh, like, some huge porn convention thing a couple years ago. And, um, and, like, they had, like, cardboard cutouts and shit of her. She's not nude in it or anything like that, but she was the model for the packaging. Um, she's done all kinds of stuff. She's in Georgia right now. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just, I, it's, it's just, it's that thought process now that, um, you know, if I do anything, it's going to have to be out of my own pocket. Um, I wish I could have gone to that. Yeah, it was before she and I were hanging out as much, but I remember her posting it on her social media and stuff like that. Uh, she was talking to me earlier. We were talking earlier today because she's, uh, she's at a, a convention or something this weekend that she's a guest at, and uh, the, it's, it's in a short town. It says Shell Yeah on the thing, and that's her big line in Shark Exorcist 2. So she kept sending me pictures of everywhere around town where it says Shell Yeah, and I was like, see? Let's just, I'm ahead of my time. Um... No, it's just the idea that, like, as the producer I was working with kind of decided he's, he's going in a different direction um, and working with more professional people, and the dude bailed on me on the money and stuff like that. Um, it's just the idea that if I want to get anything done, I'm probably going to have to pay for it myself. And uh, and then, you know, and that's, that's frustrating, you know? <laughs> um, no, I don't know. It's, it's just, I, I think I might take a long break from writing anything anymore um, and, uh, and maybe try to make a couple short films based on shit I already have and uh, and maybe the stuff that I did for Donald Farmer or for uh, you know for anybody else will come out and, and do well and then if that does well that might light a spark under me but I'm just kinda I'm just kinda done you know what's a reasonable budget for a feature uh, I could be a huge porn director. I have so many fucking ideas for how to revolutionize porn. Um, but, you know. Uh, I don't know. I Everything I write, I try to write in the, like, fifteen dollars to $17,000 range. Um, and keep it as small as possible. Um, 
But, you know, there's people who can do things for way less. I have a hard time writing very minimalistic because I feel like if you don't have good enough actors and if you're not a good enough director, you can't hold people's uh, attention without spectacle. So if you don't have tits and you don't have gore, you know, you better make sure that you got fucking amazing actors who can carry the thing. And I, I, I don't feel comfortable enough as a director uh, to... Um, and I, I mostly cast my friends... So it's just like I, I always feel like I need to put the schlocky elements in there in order to um, to have people give a shit about it. You know, the, the smallest thing I wrote was at Amityville Halloween, which is all almost essentially one location. And I tried to write it. I was like, what if I made a Sean C. Phillips movie, but I made it good? You know, uh, 20K sounds super low. Yeah. I, oh, dude, for for 20K, I could probably make you two movies. You know, there are still a lot of people out there who still owe me favors, so locations and costumes and shit like that and certain actors, like I can get those people on board. It's just harder now, especially after the whole St. Louis guy, like I, I think people are far less uh, interested in listening to the pitch anymore, you know, um... And that, that sucks. That When people start to tune you out, I, I start to feel like the dudes, uh, you know, I start to feel like the dudes online who are always talking about these movies they're going to make and they never make them. Now I'm that guy, you know? the Yeah, man, that's, well, that's who you have it from. Roger Corman, Cannon, Fred Olin Ray, people like that. You take a budget and then you break it up into, you know, into as many pieces as you can and try to make a bunch of shit out of it um, because then the more content you have out there, the more, you know, it's like, look what I was able to do with so little, I see a lot of these indie guys who are who are kickstarting things that are like ridiculous. Because I was like, if you don't make that money back, you'll never never make another fucking movie again, you know. Um, so I'm always like, what's the smallest I can do anything for? And if you look at all the short films that we've done and fake trailers and stuff like that, I've just that's all been out of my own pocket. Like you know, yes, a lot of favors that you know people like Justin Silverman used to do for me or something like that. And a big part of the fear is that. You know, without those guys around anymore, I've had far less output when it comes to film stuff. Yeah, I've done the stuff for, you know, you know, for uh, Donald Farmer and stuff like that. But there isn't the same consistency that there used to be. So I, I part of me feels like a, a little bit of, um, you know, a little bit of a, uh, you know, imposter syndrome. What's your favorite Corman flick as a director or as a producer? Um, I think his best movie as a director is Intruder. Uh, which is the only movie of his that ever lost any money, and that's with uh, Shatner as a racist. Um, that that's a that's a really good flick, and so unlike anything else that he'd done. Um, when it comes to producing, I don't know. He's got so many good ones. I, I love Human Weights from the Deep. Uh, uh, you know, and 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 uh, the stuff he did with the Italians too, like stuff he did with Luigi Cozzi, and um, even like. Uh, you know, all his his Booty in the Jungle movies and shit like that are all so fucking fun. Yeah, Humanoids is awesome. Humanoids definitely was a big inspiration on the um, my Fiji Mermaid uh, uh, script. Um, I have the Humanoids from the Deep uh, Australian Daybill poster framed out there under the title Monster. Um, somebody actually did toys of the Humanoids recently, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, and uh, that had a female director, and she was unhappy that they went back and shot more creature rape scenes without her. And she's like, "We'll take my name off the movie." And he's like, "Yeah, we'll take your name off the movie, but you got to pay for the titles to get changed." She's like, "Never mind." And he's like, "All right, Tech War." <laughs> oh, Shatner! Remember when he wrote his own uh, like Return from the Dead uh, Trek book after uh, Generations came out? And he, like, made himself, like, fucking younger and buff in it. Good for William Shatner, though. Still kicking, man. Yeah, I don't know. Indie film. I, I, I love it, but I also hate it. And I also feel like sometimes, like... I, I definitely... Uh, I definitely am insane. Because they say, like, in, the insanity is doing the same thing over and over again. And expecting a different result. And I keep expecting a different result. I keep expecting one of these people who gets involved with stuff. And um, 
He did make a rock album too, and a spoken word album. Uh, Frankenstein Unbound is a fun one. They're, they're doing another um, another uh, Island of Dr. Moreau with uh, uh, Anthony Hopkins, I believe, was just announced. <laughs> well, yeah, but Shatner never cut his fucking wife's head off, so, you know, he's got you there. Um... But yeah, no, I, I don't know. I, I just, I'm, I'm very, uh, I don't know, I'm very down on the whole making indie film stuff right now. I, uh, I have projects I need to finish. Um, Gary Oldman played the Doctor. I can see Gary Oldman playing the Doctor, actually. Um, the, the, the Brando one is just terrible, but that documentary is incredible. Um, you're like, this is the kind of shit that happens to get a movie made, you know? Uh, let's see. It's very shy and insecure. Oh, okay. Well, nothing wrong with that. I mean, you can be behind the scenes on stuff. Um, make a Hindi movie. Uh, the doc was. Um, uh, oh God, what was that? What was that documentary called? Um, What's your favorite premise to the shittiest movie? What's your favorite premise to the shittiest movie? Uh, you ever see Farewell, or no, um, uh, Welcome Home, uh, Brother Charles, where a dude is in jail, a black guy's in jail, and um, he gets experimented on, and it gives him like a dick that is like an anaconda, and it strangles people to death when he gets out of jail? I know I'm not tapping out, man. I just I'm I'm just I'm so I have things I need to finish. Um, I gotta finish Midnight Show just for my own fucking sanity. It's my great white whale at this point. You know, I, I just I don't know. I, uh, I I I I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if this is for me. I don't know if I actually ever had what it took to do this. I think that passion uh, will take you far enough but to actually get things over the top like again if i look at it now i might go like well maybe swamp zombies 2 is the best that i can do you know um make a bollywood movie wouldn't that be cultural appropriation though like couldn't i get in trouble for that i'd have to hang out with you a marathon black exploitation movies that'd be awesome uh i love fucking black exploitation movies yeah i don't know um I still want to make things, uh, but I don't know. I just, I, I just, I, I just don't see it. You know, I don't, I don't see a path to some of these schemes actually working out. So, um, you know, I don't know. But a Bollywood uh, Mike Myers movie wasn't that the the Love Guru, one of the worst movies ever made. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I've just been thinking about it a lot recently about, like, you know, tying up the loose ends that I have now and then just kind of, like, seeing if I can unload the scripts that I have, like, if anybody wants them. Um, because, like, you know, the, the producer I was working with was like, oh, add more projects to the pile. And I was writing in a very specific box of kind of sleazy exploitation fun stuff and I feel like I repeat myself a lot because I'm always kind of like well if this can't get made but somebody likes this I can cobble these pieces together from these other scripts and then reform it over here just so it's ready to go everything is always stackable and interchangeable um and I got super super excited about uh about Schmidt is a good movie with Jack yeah uh, and you see uh uh Kathy Bates naked in it you know um yeah, I don't know. I, I, I got super excited about doing these projects and this dude kind of vanishing. Uh, and then to hear from my producer friend, he's like, oh, we have all these other irons in the fire right now, so we're not really looking at your stuff. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's depressing. And it's, it's uh, you know, the, the, it's, 
it's it's sobering because I'm 42 years old and I've been trying to make the same shit since I was 17 and I was like well that's on me that's my fault you know um, it's not going to stop me from loving movies and having ideas for movies and stuff like that but I think it's more so just time to kind of go like alright well you got to stop talking about things you're going to make you're trying to make because it's not going to get made you know um, Vern Troyer's line <laughs> oh that's right he was the coach of the Toronto Maple Leafs in that movie. I totally forgot about that. Mike Hawk. He's the hardest there is, Mike Hawk. And then was it uh was it Justin Timberlake was the goalie in that movie? Yeah, you can, I can't make a black exploitation movie. I'm white. <laughs> I've thought about that before. I I I um. I optioned uh, one script to SRS Cinema, um, and they handpicked the director for it, and then the director didn't like the script, so they said, "Oh, well, we'll hold on to it for next time." Um, so. You know, I, but I, there's other stuff I've I've written for other people, um, and it just feels like more so stuff I've I've written for other people is the stuff that's getting picked up, which makes me feel shitty about my own work. You know, um, I don't know, I I, I don't know, I don't know. Pootie Tang is a great black exploitation movie. Uh, you know, son, my runny on the pity kind. Um, I just, again, if I was gonna do one, I would want to do it like I wouldn't. I don't. If I was gonna make a black exploitation movie, I wouldn't do tongue in cheek. I wouldn't do black dynamite. I would play it straight. You know, I would. I would do it like across 110th Street or Bucktown or or uh, you know something like that. Like I would want it to be a straight 1970s black exploitation movie. What about a white exploitation movie? Yeah, that's every uh, movie that's produced by Pure Flix, you know. Um, it, well, actually, white exploitation now is every movie that Mark Wahlberg is going to be making. <laughs> Do you like the Rudy? Rudy, like the football player? Oh, God, Tippy Toes? Like the Mr. Tubbs movie. Do you like... Oh, of course, I love fucking Rudy Ray Moore. Um, Dolomite... Uh, Do, I mean, Rudy Ray Moore in general and Dolomite were such a huge inspiration on me when I was uh, in middle school and high school when I first read about him um, because he's a dude who was like... You know, if you've ever seen the Eddie Murphy movie about him and stuff like that, but it's like it's a guy who basically created himself. You know, and everybody was like, nobody wants you to be a fucking action star. He's like, all right, well, let's go do it myself. And he's essentially the the, the godfather of, of hip hop, you know, and he, he found a way to make these movies. You know, he got the, the he got that hotel and he pulled all these fucking people together and they made this thing, which was a cultural, you know, thing. It was it was a happening for, uh, you know, for the black community at the time and and influenced so many rappers and, and uh, you know, and I just reading about him was such an inspiration because it's like, well, yeah, I mean, the dude fucking made himself, you know, he, that's amazing. That's that's incredible for somebody who just like life finds a way, you know, super fly. One of the best uh, it was Curtis Blow. One of my favorite black exploitation soundtracks is uh, super fly because the score isn't like Shaft. Chef works in on this way of like it's fucking awesome. It's it's a it's a it's the anthem for this dude. But what's awesome about the Superfly soundtrack is it's the Greek choir. It's warning him over and over and over again, but he's not listening, leading us to where we are. And I think that's such a cool way to play it. That the dude can be a you know the pusher man and all that kind of stuff. But there's another voice that's that's the voice of reason, which is saying like this is not what you want to be. This is not where you want to be. And that was a really cool juxtaposition, especially for that time, you know? Transploitation. Uh, I'm sure that exists, you know? 
There's a there's a um, what was the movie? Because I knew, I knew the director. It's called like Ticked Off Trannies with Knives or something like that. And the the director is trans, and um, they got tons of hate from the trans community. But they're like, I I'm trans. I want to make a fucking trans movie. What? I'm not allowed to do that, you know? Uh, I've never seen it, but I love the Flaming Lips. Favorite Andy Warhol movie? Um, I mean, he, he didn't direct them, but I like uh, I like Flesh for Frankenstein a lot. I used to have a, uh, a 3D print of that with Udo Kier. Um, that's just a fucking weird movie. And then Kier was also in his Dracula as well. Uh, but I like those. Um, too long thanks for everything, Julie Newmar. Penis exploitation movie? Would that be like the opening of the last, uh, uh, what was it, the last um, Jackass movie with the big dick as the uh, puppet as the, the Godzilla? Hedwig and the Angry Inch? Um, I remember having that one at the AMC theater as well. I also saw the, the Broadway show of it. Right, Elvira? Mm -hmm. Violet Returns. No, we don't need Lorena Bobbitt coming back. Actually, yes, you know what? She could come back because uh, she didn't do anything wrong. That dude was an abusive piece of shit. Yeah, the Thumb movies was the guy who did uh, Kung Pao, right? I remember writing all the notes for the rental... Was it rental reviews when they did uh, when they did Kung Pao? And I, I, they didn't know that the, the Thumb Wars guy was the same dude. YouTube professionals. Yeah, those were a thing for a while. They used to be on TNT all the time. A possessed penis that talked into killing people. Mm -hmm. I don't remember that one. With thumbs. Oh, the Blair Witch with thumbs. Yeah. I remember that. Blair Witch was ever. Remember they did like, uh, there used to be like adults or uh, Cartoon Network bumpers. Like they did one with like Scooby Doo and shit like that as well. Um, yeah, Blair Witch was something. Don't forget the Hot Ones guys. Well, yeah, he has a TV show. It's always funny when they try to do like anti anything movies and they turn out to be exactly the opposite of what they're trying to do. Like, like look at Reefer Madness. It's like an anti drug movie, but it's like, what? Well, yeah, but people are going to watch it and then it's going to make them want to smoke pot because it's so ridiculous. <laughs> I showed uh, Reefer Madness on 420 one year at the, uh, at the Wayne Theater and people were mad about it. And they're like, it's a, it's a, Pro pot movie. I was like, no, it's an anti pot movie. You're just, really? And we're mad about pot in a state where it's legal? I don't know. I do think you guys are going to like the, the, the one short that I wrote for Mets uh, that we're going to shoot on Monday. I, uh, I got some green slime for Ghostbusters, and we're going to do one about busting, making you feel good. I did see the musical one. Yep. Yeah, who would have guessed that fucking Idiocracy would wind up being a documentary, right? The whole world's fucked. I, it's a, that's why I'm like, what are we doing, you know? I'm sitting here in my living room, my cat's biting my heel. Remember the movie called S Yes? Uh, because my old boss uh, produced that. He produced uh, Let's Scare Jessica to Death and... Frogs were three movies that he produced, and then he was the owner of Bowtie Cinemas. Um, and then his, the guy who bought the company from him is a good friend of mine. He's the one who, who owns that amusement park now in, uh, in Albany, which I want to go film at. I just haven't had an excuse to go up there, um, you know, because I'd like to take Mets with me, and I'd like to take Fallon up there and, and figure something out to shoot, but just haven't had a time. 
and Mummy Cop got produced. Well, again, he he paid for that out of his own car, out of his own pocket. I pitched that as a movie too. I I wrote a whole outline on how we could do that as a feature, but it was just too much work for people. So, what time is it? Uh, howdy duty time, adventure time. I don't know what time is it. Actually, I don't know because the clock is in the other room. But we've been at this for two hours now, so we got that going for us. Yeah, anything can get produced. It's just, it's a matter of, like, getting something I made produced. That's the biggest problem, is I, I see things sometimes and I, I go, like, well, you know, 4.50, it's not late, not, it's early. Uh, well, it's not, it's not 4.50 here. It's for 5.40, you know, Oh, okay. Morris Day album. What's, oh, okay. My Jungle Love. Oh, wee, oh, wee, oh. It's Daylight Savings Time tonight. I know. That's why I gotta, I gotta be at work even extra early tomorrow. Motherfucking Quakers. But, uh, when I, um... Uh, you gotta tell us another dead guy story. I don't know which ones I've told already. I think I've told most of them. Um... But oh, uh, uh, Horn Dog! When I was when I wrote out the um, the bust that makes me feel good thing, uh, I said this one is especially for Horn Dog, and Mets agreed with me. <laughs> Fucking farmers. Um, yeah, another uh, the the first one is great. The first uh, Wolf Cop is fantastic. Um, the second one production got messed up by another dude who fucked me over on money. Um, the guy who I wrote, uh, Satan Slumber Party with, or for, he was the distributor for, um, Wolf Cop 2. I need to reprise my role for, uh, as Wolverine for the OnlyFans. I'd have to grow the sideburns back. I actually thought about it today, but I just got rid of them. Um... I don't know. I'll have to think about that. I know... Uh, I have one story that I know I can't tell. Um, but if I get the person who was involved in it to come here with me, maybe then I could tell the story. Uh, because it's a little bit traumatizing, but it's also really funny. Um, old Man Logan. Sometimes I feel like it, man. Sometimes I feel like it. I've noticed more wrinkles every day. Uh, watched Flowers of the Killer Moon. Yes, I did. Um, I, I thought it was very good. I really liked the ending of it. Uh, just watched Death Proof. I wanted to love it. Yeah, but uh, see, no, the pacing isn't off. That's the thing. The, the pacing is exactly what it's supposed to be because it's uh, supposed to be a 70s exploitation movie that only had a couple things that they could exploit, so everything else has to be padding. So that for in that regard, I think it's it's actually pretty genius. <laughs> Can you tell a story with a lot of masking and hints? Um, no, I I want the other person to be here, and I know there's somebody who I talk to regularly, um, who I used to work with. So I think that uh, I think I could get them to at least. If, at least if I run something one night or if we if we go to like the King of Prussia Theater see something, I can get them to come out and, and at least sit in the car with me and I want them to tell the story. Uh, and then I'll chime in on my part of it because it's it's pretty disgusting but also pretty hilarious. Yeah, I, I gotta I gotta do Grindhouse. I wanted to last year do a, a review of it, but I just I didn't get around to it and I really want to because I wanna tell about that movie. It was one of the best movie-going experiences I ever had was seeing that one. Good night, man. Have a good one. I'll remind you next stream. I'll get to it. I definitely will. It's one that, like, we've talked about, like, through chat. Um, and I keep saying, like, come do the video. And they haven't done it. Uh, but, you know. It's also because some people are still sort of connected to other people and they're they're testing 
not getting in too much trouble if they come and associate with me. Yeah, because again, if you have a movie, uh, I think my first movie theater experience was Nicaragua watching Rio. Okay. And Rio is the reason that the movie called Nuke didn't get made because they had similar plots and uh, they beat Pixar to the punch. So I never got a movie with my name in it, um, as the title at least. Newt is smart. No, not really. If I was smarter, I, I would have made way better choices in the past. Um, but yeah, so if you look at Death Proof, it's like, okay, you've got, you got the psycho aspect of it. You have your first group that you think is going to be your leads get cut off, and then we're mm -hmm. starting to follow another group. If you also follow the idea of it being like an Australian road movie, uh, something like Road Games or, or something like that, that one changes... Uh, lead it, you know, our protagonist three times in in uh, in Razorback that you know. So I could see it doing like that, and it's like, okay, we have the beginning kill, we have the ending chase, everything else into that. If they were making an exploitation movie at that time with very little money, would have to all just be people talking or or pointless filler in order to maximize needing the money for those cool scenes. So in that regard, I think Tarantino perfectly uh, exemplified. Uh, what it was to be a, a grindhouse movie, you know? Back, what did you miss? You didn't miss much. Uh, how do you get permission to filming in places like supermarkets or private property? Uh, you ask. Um, some places all you need to do is, is get a permit or get insurance. Um, and, uh, you know, like when we did the Andrew WK music video, I said that it was a high school project. And I lied to save us all the insurance money. And then I had to go and do like odd jobs in order to get the location. So like we filmed at the grocery store. I had to show up at 5 a.m. and stock milk so that they can get in there at 10 o'clock in the morning to start filming. Um, it was the same thing with the, uh, the dentist's office and the gas station. Like I had to show up and actually work so that they could have the place um, to, to film in. And so it saved us money. Tarantino is the goat. I love Dune 2. Yeah, I like Dune 2 a lot. I like that people are understanding, <laughs> slowly coming to understand that Paul's the bad guy. Milkman Newt. There you go. Oh, I've heard that before, that Andrew W.K. is like, <laughs> he's like uh, uh, Dread Pirate Roberts. Like, it's just someone else takes up the mantle. Um, I don't know. I met the dude. He was interesting. Very first, so before our very first shot, um, uh, where I'm set up across the thing from them because I, I have the, the bounce for the reflection of the light and he has to enter the frame and he's standing next to me waiting for um, Nick Murphy, I think was his name. He used to be on that show Continue to call action and Andrew WK standing next to me and I go, you know, I know you're really excited to work with me, but let's do our best to try to be professional. And then when they called action... He didn't quite know how to process that. He was giving me like a weird look, so he missed his cue to go in the first time. He is married to Kat Dennings. Yes, lucky man. And then he stuck me with a, 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 a needle when we were filming at the dentist's office that had um, Novocaine in it because for some reason they, they took the tip, like the little stopper thing off for the shot where it comes to the camera and then they didn't put it back on for the scene with me and I couldn't talk. My mouth was in like separators. Uh, if you ever watch it, I've got like this big fucking thing in my mouth and they left it out and he, he got too close and he got me right in the, in the jaw with it and my fucking face like got all swollen. She has some amazing tits. Just absolutely stunning. I love that we're in an age of tits again. That it's okay to, to be a... a Big titty mama, you know? Um, he's now a motivational speaker. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> I try to avoid uh, people running at me in cemeteries. Uh, when was it not okay? I don't know. People thought it was weird, like... Like, for a while, they're like, you know, it wasn't okay for, like, boobs, you know? And now, like, with Sydney Sweeney, like, it's okay again. People seem to be interested in boobs again. 
You know, call me old fashioned. I was just never not interested. Uh, yeah, she was in Nick and Nora's uh, Infinite Playlist. She was in um, not, uh, 40 Year Old Virgin. Beebs. Tarantino's Best and Worst. Um, what was your go to educational show growing up? Uh, like, like Mr. Wizard kind of thing, or like, um, or like Sesame Street. Reconnecting. I'm live. Okay. Uh, I'd say my favorite Tarantino movie is probably Inglorious Bastards. Um, uh, and I guess if you had to look at it, his weakest of all would probably be Death Proof. But again, I, I still really like Death Proof. Um, uh, actually, I don't know. Jackie Brown is such a close second because I, I genuinely love the adult relationship between uh, Pam Greer and Robert Forrester in that one there it's 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 very real and which is saying something in a tarantino movie which is so elevated uh reading rainbow romper i remember romper room i don't remember friendly giant uh and mr dress up i don't remember that one either oh god <laughs> crazy cemetery people Although on the Discord earlier today, I, I, I asked if anybody's ever done the good dead instead of the evil dead. And it's just evil dead, but like instead of the, the, the deadites being like evil, they're just good. And like the force comes at you, and when it gets there, it gives you your door dash. Or like the trees like help you retie your shoe. And while Shelly's in the basement, she cleans it, you know? Yeah, Adam Sandler backed out of it to do, uh, to do funny people. Okay. Yeah, no, no, I, I watched like, um, was it, it was the terror, there was the creepy Zoobly Zoo when I was growing up. There was Today's Special, there was, uh, Pinwheel was a big one when I was growing up. Um, I don't know, I watched all those shows, but like, I, I don't know, I don't know if there was ever like a sit down and learn kind of thing, uh, for me. It was always just like, I had, I, I was actively always just interested in learning shit and reading and, and, and like going to museums and, and stuff like that when I was a little kid and, and my parents thought that was super weird. Um, but I always just had a thirst for some sort of something, you know? Oh yeah. All the time, man. Um, we were filming, uh, in, um, we were filming at this theater. Uh, I remember lamb chop. Um, Rich bastards to have cable back in the day. Yeah, it was we. I, I remember when we got cable for the first time. Um, all of them have good intros. Uh, I remember we were filming. Um, this guy Marco owned this like super rundown theater, um, and we went up there and we filmed. That's when I was dating that girl Krista, and uh, the the dude just gave us the keys to the theater and just left. And I was like, okay. So we filmed the marquee scenes first. She's up on the thing putting the letters and I walk in and we did it with a drone the first time and then we did it with just steady cam um, in and then we did an, a, another pass of it with the with the slider so we could just have some things to cut to and each time we had to keep reshooting it because these like fucking junkies were over at the Dunkin Donuts kept like coming over to like see what was going on and at one point like we brought the drone down and it was this guy Sean was directing that scene and a fucking junkie tried to grab the drone and I got this girl there who's in like very skimpy usherette outfit and I'm like have to keep her inside and we're like dealing with these people but like while we were filming they were like fucking dawn of the deading it they were like staring through the window and like pressing their faces up against the glass and it was super creepy um and so yeah but we've had a couple times where we've been filming and you get some like really creepy looky loos uh, we were shooting um, a couple months back with Madeline and Fallon uh, for that Donald Farmer project, and there was like this homeless dude who just like kept coming out of the uh, the laundromat and just like standing directly in the shot and like staring at Fallon the entire time. And I'm just like, dude, can you fucking move? You know, he just wanted to start his acting career. No, I think he wanted uh, to buy drugs and he wanted to steal our drone and and uh, and get wasted. Is what I think. 
Um, yeah, it, that was something. We had to move our cars to the police station, which was around the corner, because they said we could park there and they'd watch our cars, because if we parked in the theater parking lot, there was a pretty good chance when we were going to be in there till 5, 6 o'clock in the morning, somebody was going to break into our cars. So that was, that was fun. <laughs> yeah. And Chris and I were not dating yet, yet that night we, we, we started dating because we hooked up because uh, I, I offered to get her her own hotel room. And she's like, no, you could just stay in here. And then we dated for like a year. So <laughs> I'll gladly be a guard on set. Yeah, I mean, we haven't needed one in a while. Um, but there was times where I was just like, this is bad, you know. This is not a good position for us. And then I've, I've been on other people's films uh, my buddy Brian, um, where like literally people broke into their, the van and like just took all the fucking gear that they had of there. Um, and that was all shit that was rented from mm -hmm. camera houses and stuff. So that's, you know, that, that's, that's scary right there. The joys of filmmaking, you know, I don't know why anybody would ever fucking want to do it. And I see a lot of these dudes who are able to just make shit like it's nothing. And, uh, it just, it, it's really frustrating. <laughs> I was looking at, like, a, a lot of the fu content I've shot, I don't have, um, I don't have access to, uh, because, you know, it involves people who don't work with me anymore, or it's for other things, but I was just like, if you line everything up, I've shot a whole fucking lot of stuff, I just wish I had way more to, you know, to, to, to show for all the shit that I put into things, and props, and costumes, and, and, aggravation with actresses who show up late to sets and don't know their fucking lines and then, you know, and make other people on the set uncomfortable and stuff like that. Uh, or rewrites you do to make people comfortable for things or because of budget stuff. And it's just like, I don't know why anybody would want to do this. This is terrible. <laughs> but I love it. And I want to, I just, I love seeing my name in things. And, and I love the, the feeling of having people read Things that you wrote down, so I keep doing it, and I keep realizing that, you know, it takes a little piece of you every time. <laughs> zombie film project, the scene with a hunt. High school crush was a zombie, we get him. Always rubbed it in his face, well, that's no fun. When did actors and actresses make the set uncomfortable? Oh, many times. Many, many times. Uh, I used to work with a couple actresses um, who needed to be treated special to everyone else, and uh, it would it would make things very tense because they would talk to me like I was a piece of shit in front of a set where I'm trying to be the leader on the set, and then when people watch that person talk to you that way, that changes how then they act. So we, we, there's been a couple of things we were filming where like, you know, it, it was, it just created an entirely negative thing. And then again, when people show up late and don't know their lines and stuff like that, it just, it sucks, you know? All right. Good night, Joe. Uh, I mean, they do the, the people who acted that way are, are doing way more than I am now. They, they have far more followers than I do. And are, are better known than I am. It's, it's, you know, if you're, if you're a hot woman, you know, you can get away with that stuff. Uh, it just, it always just sucked when you're trying to hold things together, um, to have people talk to you that way. And, and, you know, and then I wasn't allowed to work with certain actors because of that actor, actress, um, you know, because they didn't like the competition of it all. So it was just, it was just a lot of like shit like that, you know, uh, one of them, horn dog, one of them for sure. You know? Was the Eddie Murphy movie bad? The vampire movie? Um, it's not bad. It, it's, you could tell that Landis and Murphy were not getting along. The effects were subpar. They are very rubbery. Um, I feel like it, it just wasn't... I feel like it's a good concept, but it was poorly executed. Um... Great cast, though. Great, great cast for that movie. Uh, but there's a shot at the end when he's, like, full vampire, and the fucking head of the thing is so shiny. 
Uh, it's not Pluto Nash. No, it's not Pluto Nash. Did Rick Baker do the effects? Uh, yes, but the budget was cut. I remember that. Just be a hot woman, Newt. I should. Um, peanut butter or jelly? Uh, I go... Uh, I go chunky peanut butter and um, strawberry preserve. New York didn't work out. I don't know what that means. Um, I don't know. Uh, what was the deal with Curse? The story behind it sounds insane. Well, when Curse fucking failed, that's what got me out to L.A. the first time. Um, they, they spent a ton of money to try to reshape that movie into, into a comedy. And they started, that's when they started like reaching out to people who had written interesting spec scripts. And that's when ours got noticed. Uh, the one I wrote with Kevin Oro's, well, his name was on it. I really wrote it with Christy Berger, my, my ex. Um, and we got brought out to LA because of the failure of Cursed. So whenever I think of that movie, I think about the, the three months I got to spend in Los Angeles because of the Christina Ricci werewolf movie failure. But I do love when the werewolf gives the finger, though. <laughs> Jesse Eisenberg is in that movie, too. It was R-rated, yeah. Uh, would you consider moving to L.A.? No, not really. Everybody's really fucking fake out there, and, and it's super expensive to live. Um, I don't know. If I, if I decide that I'm done with this stuff... Oh, you got a, you got a tooth pulled. You've been out of commission. That ain't good. How come Taco Bell didn't get in trouble for cultural appropriation? Um, because it's it's uh, it's not Mexican food, right? It's it's like Tex-Mex, so it's technically not cultural appropriation. I'm sorry you got a tooth pulled. That sucks. Yeah, I don't know. I I, I think if I if I decide that I'm done with trying to be an indie filmmaker. Um, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll move back to Arizona or something like that and just get away from here and start fresh again by the time I'm like 45. I'm kind of giving myself, um, 42 now. I, I said that I'll give myself until 44 to, to try to complete two projects. And if I can't do that, I'm done, you know? Oh, I've seen those before, Joe. They used to do it in Wizard Magazine a lot. Um, where they would do, like, fan casting and stuff like that. And there's a lot of cool ones. But they did one recently. I saw a picture of Stallone as the Punisher, um, if they did it in, like, the era of Cobra, which would have been really fucking cool. Why not 45? I don't plan on living that long. No, I don't know. I, I think that... I think 43, 44... Is, is a good cutoff point because then I have, you know, I can get rid of all this shit, you know, and, and just try to, uh, I don't know. You like it? Yeah, I like the Dolph Lundgren Punisher. I, I wish that they had the fucking skull in there and the logo, but I get it, you know. No, it was, it was just using the, the title, 43 and retire. Well, retire from, like, creative ventures um, and, like... No, I, I just, I want to put a period at the end of it. I want to know that I tried, and it didn't work out, but I gave it everything that I had, and I feel like I've kind of, I've almost completely emptied the tank when it comes to all this stuff, you know, I've, I've, I've written so fucking much, I've tried to be involved in so many projects and help people where I can, and, and I've made a lot of good contacts, and I've, I've connected a lot of good people together, and I've done a lot of YouTube videos and stuff like that, and, um... You know, and, and not too many, you know, not, not that many people get to say that they were like, you know, uh, they, they were, a, 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 you know, they were a, a, a huge talking point about the whole plagiarism thing. Like, okay, it was shitty, but like, you know, hey, I had that going for me. Um, even from YouTube. No, I think I'll still do, uh, I'll still do, um, you know, some stuff when I have stuff to say. That's the biggest thing is uh, anymore I, I feel like I don't have anything to say. And if you're, I, I, I can't, like, I can't um, speak negatively of other people doing YouTube stuff, uh, you know, when I'm kind of going through the motions a lot of times as well. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I want to do anymore. I just, I don't want to, um, 
I don't want to continue to just like uh, uh, I'm gonna find you a new redheaded muse. No, I, I I I'm done with I'm done with redheads. You know, um, I have Madeline to come around. Madeline has a new boyfriend. Bring him out, you know, and they'll they'll uh, you know, and we'll we'll have some fun. She's wild, and we'll do fun wild shit. Uh, you know, again, if all the, all the people I met while we were making triple Xmas and stuff, if I had the money, I would have them out here doing stuff. You guys would go fucking crazy for those people, like that's the flux and people like that. You'd go you'd go crazy if you met these people um, because they're they're nuts and they're fun and they're good at what they do and they're sexy and they own it and they're not problems on set, you know. Oh, I'd love to see Stallone as old Bruce Wayne in A Dark Knight Returns. Even just like a fan film would be so fucking cool because he's just got all the physicality of it. Jess is awesome. And I again, she's so busy now because she's so in demand. Um, but I, I'd love to get her in something. Have you seen uh, Antichrist with Lars Vent for my Lars Venture? Yeah. I was actually just talking to a buddy of mine last night about, um, about uh, Melancholia. Because he had never seen that before. <laughs> Rodney Dangerfair is just a Um Maybe not retire, but reshape something. Yeah, I don't know. I'm always going to have ideas. I sit every day thinking like, oh, it'd be cool if we did this or this. But I'm just less and less inclined to throw myself into trying to visualize it anymore. Because I'm just tired of it's more, more than anything. It's the it's the uh, it's the impact of trying to get people. Ex it's not even the writing it. That that's whatever. That it doesn't. You know, you turn in a script. It doesn't have to be perfect. You'll reshape it as you go. But it's the idea of getting people excited about a thing, and then getting everybody to see the vision your way, and then dragging them along. And every time you do it, and then the project stalls midway out. People believe in you less and less, you know, and, and when you don't have anything to show uh, and you make promises, oh, we're going to do this and we're going to do this and, and we got these scripts going and we're going to, oh, we're going to do Sharkula, whatever. Uh, it's, it's uh, you know, it gets more and more depressing and it gets more and more frustrating and, and uh, deflating to watch people go like, he ain't never going to make that. You know, I hear it all the time. But people who still like me, you know, and, and still want to work with me are like, you're never going to get that made. You know, it's that Jaws Ferratu is probably never going to get made. You know, um, a lot of this stuff is, is never going to get made. You know, so it's it's the idea of just being, um, what's the biggest thing holding you back from making money? It's, it's, it is what it is. Like, uh, you know, I can't do what I did. Back when we made Swamp Zombies, I was able to fund that thing because I was making a lot of money then, um, you know, and, and I was able to go, okay, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put five grand aside and, uh, and not have to worry about it. And now it's like, fuck, if I do that, I'm fucked, you know? So, it, again, it goes back to I wish I never left the Wayne, you know? I definitely had more money then. Um, I had more people who believed in me back then before Screenwave and stuff like that. Um, and now it's just an idea of... Uh, you sound like you've been reading. No, I don't. I, I I haven't seen haven't seen anything that dude's done in since June of last year. I, I made sure not to look. Same thing with like the the, the Reddit people. I don't look. You know. Um, th this is just me. Uh, you know. Um, speaking realistically. You know. It's it's when we thought that we had. The new studio thing opening up and stuff like that. And then we thought that I had this Ohio dude things. I, I keep, I get myself excited about things and then I talk about things because I, I need like the fucking, the, the green light, like in the great Gatsby, uh, you know, to keep me motivated. Um, you know, and I sold the script to those dudes in Arizona and I understand like they are restructuring their company. And then the, the dude in Alabama with Vampire, like he says, hey, I can't put the money in for this movie. I got to find another producer. So I've been trying to help him find another producer because I still believe that is a project that could do well. You know, um, the comic I is, is uh, it's five and a half issues are done, but I pissed those guys off because I made a t-shirt, you know, and, and that made them mad and they looked at it as a big fuck you and, and I was called selfish. So I, I'm, I'm trying to... You know, I, I'm trying very hard to uh, 
to, to keep it together and not like let it break me down that I, I want it's not even about like uh, like look look Ryan and Tony look look what I did something like that oh look crystal look what I did it's not it's not about that it's more about like can I fucking do this you know and if, if things do work out who's still gonna be around you know and and that that's the part that that is maddening especially when you get like oh you might have cancer I was just like fuck like I don't you know I, I don't I don't I don't know I don't know uh, even Florida man is done now no it's not done it's it's still gonna come out um uh, you know, it's, it's five and a half issues are done. It's going to, it's going to come out this summer. Um, it's just, they are very unhappy with me. Um, and I, they, they think I'm very selfish and that was not my intention. And I think, uh, in the last year, especially they've, they've been working with other people and less with me. Um, and I think that I kind of showed that I'm kind of a one trick pony, you know, I, 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 I want to diversify and write different things, but I, I don't really, I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 I mentally trick myself into, um, into this stuff. No, money is the, is the big issue always, you know, and, uh, and, um, I should have taken better advantage of the production stuff, you know, Uh, was it you costing them money from it? No, and I only sold one, uh, but I didn't ask for permission, and they had a they had a rollout that they wanted, but I wanted to prove that the project was still happening because there are I do you know while I don't read British guy and I don't read Reddit, I still get messages on Instagram and on Twitter and stuff like that saying you're a piece of shit, you're a liar, your projects are never going to happen, you're all you're all talk, um, and I wanted to be like okay, well I'm going to put this stuff up here that is mine that worked on. And, uh, they had a very specific plan, so, um, just because I didn't, I didn't ask for permission, and I, I, uh, they had a very specific plan they wanted on the rollout, and I didn't ask, and, uh, you know, and, and that wasn't my artwork to use, the logo was from the guy who did the, the logo, um, so, yeah, I, I shouldn't have put that up there, um, I, I was impulsive, and I was trying to scratch my own ego, by saying it's still happening, you know, uh, so I, I think that I think that might have been the final nail in the coffin for those guys uh, that will still do the comic. But I think that that might be. Um, uh, did you? Yeah, I apologized, you know, and I tried to explain it, and they said that that doesn't matter, and they said I do this myself, and that I should be staying off social media and just making things. And I wish I could. I wish I had people around who would come out and, and, and make stuff. That's why I wrote a whole bunch of shorts, um, uh, to shoot some stuff like cheap and quick with Mets on Monday. Um, you know, no, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm frustrated. I, because I'm just watching other people continue to, to, to lap me and get nominated for awards and, and, and grow in their sub count and stuff like that. And, and, uh, you know, and, and I'm watching ours dwindle and, and projects not get made and, and, uh, getting the runaround and stuff. So I don't know. I just, I, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I should have, I should have just talked to them and said, Hey, I'd like to put up the logo, and I didn't. I, I was impulsive on that, so... Um, I'm not letting them win, I, I, and I'm not quitting. I'm not doing that. Like Again, we have the NJ Horror Con coming up. I'm, I'm a guest at that. Um, you know, but I also I also want... Uh, I asked the dude who runs the con to, to feature Mets in some of the stuff, too, because I'm, I'm featured as a guest. But I, I feel like Mets feels like they are taking a back seat to stuff, and I don't want that to be the case. Um, but I also can't, you know, I, I can't go dictating terms when I'm a dude with 12,000 subscribers on the thing, and they've got, like, real stars, you know, and stuff. And even Fallon, like, is only going to be there the one day, but I'm going to give Fallon we our, my booth that day. Oh, just burped. Um, you know, and because I was like, more people are going to come see her than are come see me. You know, so I don't know. I'm just trying to figure out where, you know, what, where, where to go from here and what the, 
the next step in all of this is because I sit at my computer some nights and I'm like, I need to be, I need to be doing something and, uh, and then nothing comes out or I'll sit down to record a review and, and I'll get 10 minutes into it and I'll just delete it. And I'm like, does and nothing sounds right right now. There is no, th there's nothing pushing me forward and stuff. And it, it is, it is a mixture of the weather sucks, you know, uh, the health stuff, the job stuff. And just, you know, watching there's a lot of other people just, you know, elevating themselves in their lives. And I'm still going like, we're going to make a shark, shark vampire movie. Uh, have you been going to therapy? Um, not of late. I, uh, I, I, I'm taking a little break right now, just money wise. Um, and, uh, you know, just to kind of get, get things going, uh, you know, to, to catch up on medical bills and stuff like that. So you know, I, I, it's, it's just a matter of, I need to create some space for myself and then figure out where I want to go, what the next, what the next step is, like what, what makes sense, um, you know, and I know, and yes, it's all, it's all perception of reality, what, oh yeah, Elvira, um, don't quit on the mental. I know it's very important and it's something I need to get back into, but I had, to, when I was budgeting myself, I, I said that, you know, uh, making sure my insides don't rot out is a little bit more important than my brain right now. Um, and I, I, I'll talk to my ex, Christy, who's the, uh, therapist occasionally about stuff. Um, but you know, right now it's, it's just a matter of, there's a lot of stuff and I'm, I'm, I'm not as good right now at clearing out like if you get like a, a bundle of wires and you have to like wind everything back up and make it make sense right now, I'm having a harder time with that, um, than I have in quite a while. And, uh, you know, and it's just, uh, you, the creative part is so important and I just, I don't, I don't have a taste for it right now. And that's, that's the, that's the most worrisome part is, um, you know, I know that if given the right opportunity, uh, if you shave your head, I'm going out. No, I'll Britney Spears it. Um, no, nothing like that. Uh, I did get a haircut a couple weeks ago. Um, I don't know. I, I just, I, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm freaking myself out. And as soon as the fucking Ohio thing happened, it really just set me into a, into a tailspin. And then the whole t-shirt thing and, and, um, and stuff like that is just making me go like, I don't know, man. Like the, I, I don't know where, uh, Mets will be my conservator. I'm fine with that. I'll be out there shaved head attacking a paparazzi with a fucking umbrella. Um, I don't know. I, 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 I'll get like these weird manic sparks where I'll want to write and I'll want to get stories out of my head and stuff like that. And right now I just don't, I don't see it. I don't see, uh, any stories I want to tell. I don't see anything I want to rewrite. Because again, it's just gonna sit there, and, and I'm just tired of, I'm just tired of adding to the pile, you know. I agree. Um, sometimes it, it works like that, though. Sometimes I'm I'm good at. Uh, Sup, man? How's it going? Hey, John. How you doing? Nick says, "Fuck off." Just shave your head and start talking. Oh God. But Andrew Tate's the incel guy, right? Yeah. I could, to I could never be an incel. I don't... It is, yeah, but it's just, we're coming up on three years, you know, and um, I just, I, 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 I've done a lot, but I have so little of my own to show for it that it's, uh, yeah. Top five stand-up comics. Um, I don't know, like George Carlin, uh, George Carlin, Richard Pryor, Robin Williams, gotta put Louis C.K. up there as much as he's kind of a piece of shit. Um, I don't know, I have to think about that one. Funniest line in the movie that always gets me. I don't know, there's so many. I 
I'm not giving up. Again, I, I'm not giving up. I'm just, I, I'm, I'm trying to recalibrate. I don't know. If you have any budget, what film would you make? If I, if, if money wasn't an option or like wasn't an object, um, I would probably do, uh, I would probably do Planet Frankenstein. Um, but even that I think is too big for me. Like I, I'm questioning my own ability to direct a set. Um, so, but if I, I, like, I don't know, I'd want to, I just want to do something small. Like I just want to make a fun little fucking small thing that we can put every, like, I just want to put people to work. That's the biggest thing. That's, that's the point that the part that like is the most disappointing is there's people out there who I just want to, I just want to be able to pay them an honest wage for, for what they're good at and then give them the, the, the kick in the ass that they need to, uh, um, you know, as soon as I get 20 K, I don't need people's, you know, I don't want any of your guys' money, you know, don't buy the t-shirts. I'll get in trouble again. <laughs> no, please buy the t-shirts. I took those, that t-shirt off. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I just, I want to be able to, um, well, he's not going to reach out to me. He, he, he vanished from social media and stuff like that. Um, he knew at the time that I was going through some health stuff. And I, I told him flat out that, like, you know, if, if the budget he wanted to give me, I was going to use, uh, I was going to use five grand to take care of some medical stuff. And then that would be paid back right away. And it wouldn't and before we even got into filmmaking stuff. Um, and he knew what I was going through at the time. And, you know, I, my assumption for the dude is that I don't think it was, I don't think it was vindictive. I think he was a guy who wanted to be a bigger, you know, he, he, he wanted to be a bigger thing, you know, and he's a nice guy. Uh, I, you know, the last time I messaged him, it was like, you know, I'm not mad. I just want to know why, like, I want to know why you would do this to somebody when you know that they're going through something right now. But you know, I, it is, it is what it is. It's, I hate to say that cause I hate that saying, but it, it's very true is, um, you know, you, you can't trust anybody, uh, you know, and, and when people show you who they are, you got to believe them. Um, so, but that, there's been a lot of that, you know. Ohio uh, resident. Yeah, but I mean, other than that, that weekend was great. That Ohio con was fantastic, um, you know. Don't worry about it. A dude uh, who, going way back to when I first got uh, fired from Screenwave, um, uh, I, uh, a guy, I started, you know, talking more openly on social media about mental health stuff and um, my own three suicide attempts. And this guy messaged me and said, hey, man, I'm just letting you know that I appreciate all the work that you did on the other channels and stuff like that. I'm going to on alive myself tonight. So I said, no, 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 no. Call me, call me, call me. So I gave this fucking dude my phone number and we talked for like six hours and then we stayed in touch from there. Um, and while before we came out to Ohio, uh, he had just come into some money for, uh, uh, in a will or something like that. And he wanted to finance some movies. So we went out, Mets came with us. We, we went and we had uh, a nice dinner and uh, he's like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna do this thing, and and I rewrote the stuff he wanted the way he wanted it, and and got the legal stuff situated, and then just fucking ghosted me, and then told me he was gonna send it, and then didn't, and then said he was gonna send it, and then he didn't, and then I said, look, this is what's going on right now. I can't keep playing these games. Um, you know, I said if you can't do it, please tell me you can't do it, and then that was it. That was the last I heard from the guy. So I, I guess that was his way of saying he couldn't do it. Right, Elvira. You know, so, but that, that was, that, that, that took a lot of fire out of me because it was just like, um, how often do you have an opportunity like that presented to you? How is Elvira? She's fine. She's hanging out. She's under the chair right now. Ow. She's been either laying it on top of my feet, biting my feet, or now she's sitting underneath the chair, like, headbutting my ass so 
she's weird. Um, but yeah, but so just there's just been a bunch of creative setbacks of late. So that's that's been the biggest thing. Um, and, and you know, it makes you go like. Uh, no, I get that, I, but like from everything that the dude, you know, all of his social media and stuff like that, he's he's, you know, he he's. Uh, it seems like he he's living an okay life. You know, it didn't seem like he was struggling, and he's he made his own film and stuff like that, and he showed it to me, and I thought it was pretty good. Um, so yeah, but you don't have to lie to me to hang out. Like if I'm in the same place, like. Uh, uh, you know, I'll come hang out. I don't, I don't want you to lie to me and tell me you're going to give me money or shit. I'll just come hang out just at fucking hang out. Cause that's what I do, you know? Um, and, uh, yeah. So, you know, it's just, it's just one of those things. You don't have to lie, uh, to kick it. No, exactly. Um, you know, uh, you know, race came to hang out with us. Race flew across the fucking country to come hang out with us. <laughs> um, but, you know, uh, no, exactly. And I, and I wish that it never got to that point. Like, so many times I told him, like, you know, um, like, dude, you don't have to give me money to be involved in stuff. Like, you, you, you know, you know, like, you don't have to lie to me to be my friend or anything like that. Like, I'd, I'd rather just people be 100 fucking percent on Front Street with me. Because it's going to be a lot easier if, if hard times come and stuff like that. Um, you know, and then while well, that's all going on, I, I was in, I'm in the running kind of for this fucking, uh, for this, uh, you know, for this reality thing. And now that's held up again. Um, uh, so it's like, I don't know. There's just really nothing to look forward to right now. And that, that's the hardest part is when you don't have anything that you like to, to keep you afloat. You know, um, trying to get you out here. It's in gay porn. That's fine, race. You and I can do gay porn. You know, we'll do like some hot things out in your in your swimming pool and stuff like that. You know, um, in that Arizona heat. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I I just wish people were. Um, that's true. Never trust a Backstreet Boy fan. Got to be in sync. And you say bye, bye, bye. Uh, I don't know. I, I just I, I want to make stuff. I want to I want to be able to put my friends to work and and make people proud and stuff like that. And, you know. Oh, like a like a horror host kind of thing. Yeah, I wrote one. Um, big opportunity. Um, we had to move. Would you? Yeah, I think more and more. Uh, I'm looking at that as an, as a thing. I, I stayed around here because I thought that the, uh, the studio thing was going to happen. Um, it is still happening. I just don't think I'm part of it anymore. Um, so I don't know. I, I, I don't know. My, my future is, is in flux right now. Um, but no, I wrote a, I wrote a horror host thing, uh, uh, called last video store on the left by the cemetery. Um, and it was a co-hosting thing with myself and my former, uh, former friend and um it was a lot of fun and i still have that script and i was thinking about rewriting it for fallon um but it's just one of those things that's like what are you doing what an idiot uh my cat is like holding on to the bottom of the sofa and like wrapping around this way so all i see is like this is the sofa this is her legs and she's underneath it i was like what the fuck are you doing you weirdo See if I miss something here. Um, let's move to New York City. We can be roommates. There you go. It's true. If you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. What's that dude? Um, who's that? Like, there's an autistic guy who like uh, films himself in New York, and he wears like a sea captain hat, and he's always singing that. Like, I'll I'll always see these fucking videos of like this dude who's always singing that in New York, and he's like this weird like autistic dude. Um, I've like fallen down the uh, I've fallen down the um, the YouTube rabbit hole of like recent uh, like weird lol cow guys that like you know are like the new generation uh, Chris Chans naked cowboy I filmed something with that guy uh, for a trauma project years ago um, 
with this girl, Teresa, who was also in the Andrew WK video. Uh, she's the girl who pours the, um, the, uh, dishwater, the, the soap down her throat. Stuff like that. Yeah, who, you know, Roberta, nothing, you, you can get an audience, you know. Um, I'm shocked every day that people watch this crap. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I, I don't know. I want to, I want to inspire people. I want people to want to make their own fucking art, man. Like that's, I don't want to be depressing on here and, and talk about shit that's not working. I like what I'm excited and think things are working, you know, but ignorance is bliss. And then once you get out of it, you know, yeah, we, that was, that was kind of the idea was to grab a bunch of, um, uh, not do public domain stuff, but do like stuff that people are self-distributing and then work out a, a deal with them as far as revenue sharing and stuff like that. So then you're showing not the same stuff that everybody, oh, we're doing Carnival of Souls, we're doing the Killer Shrews, you know. I would want to do like more modern indie stuff that people, you know, are distributing themselves and that way you can have more fun with it. And... Um, came up with a whole bunch of like fun, cheesy things because it would be a public access show in hell um, and it was these two demons uh, that run the thing and, the, and, and uh, I don't know, it was, it was a fun idea. Ah. Oh, that sucks. There's always stuff that you do the research first so that nobody says you ripped anybody off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, having tits is, is a really easy way to get views. That's why I'm going to be changing up all of the... Uh, I need a lot of thumbnails going forward are just going to be cleavage with the name of the movie written across the cleavage and just see if that gets us any views, you know? Um, we'll see. All right, guys. I'm going to cut this one short. Um, been about this about three hours because it is almost daylight savings time and I need to get to bed because uh, tomorrow is going to be a motherfucking day. But we'll, uh, Mets and I will share some pictures of the shoot we're going to do on Monday. We've got three shorts we're going to do for the channel um, and hopefully a review as well. And then uh, once I kind of get my new part time job uh, schedule situated and, um, and then my medical schedule situated, uh, we'll try to get back into streaming as far as we can, and then hopefully next time we all talk, I'll have some kind of kind of good news for you guys. But um, right now, it's just kind of um, licking the wounds and figuring out how to get out of this kind of funk that I'm in right now. Um, and you know, it's good news to not have cancer. I'll give it that. Uh, you know, um, it's just all the other stuff is worrisome, and then um, I'm gonna try to to repair things with the 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 comic book publish the promoter uh producer guy and um and I'm gonna pitch this jersey devil thing and see what happens and hopefully you know and hopefully the vampire guy will find the producer he's looking for um and maybe something something will start going well but as of right now uh thank you guys for hanging out with me tonight and i will chat with you all next time